Oh, cool. Good morning, everyone out there on Facebook. Today we have for you not only the greatest mastermind ever, but we have Joelle here who has the randomizer, and we're going to put people on blast. Okay, good. All right, guys, before we get started with anything, I just want to do a quick exercise with you guys, okay? Uh, I want you guys to remember that we cannot, we're not at our best. We can't learn and we can't take anything in if we have other things in our mind, other things that are bothering us, things that are uh, poking at us, things that are just messing with our head. So before we get started, I just want everybody to, just for a, for, for a quick moment, just get up for a second, everyone, if you can. If your legs are not broken and not in a wheelchair, just want everyone to get up. John, you're good. You can stand. You can stay standing. John's the only one excused from this exercise. He's already standing up. Tom, come on, man. You know you got those horses that are on your mind. You've got to clear those horses out. All right, guys. Just close your eyes for a moment and just take some deep breathing and just focus on your breath and forget about everything else. Let's just focus on nothing else but just being present and just breathing. Nothing else can affect us. Nothing that's happened in the morning on the way here. None of that traffic. None of the arguments on the way out. None of the people who were messing with you all weekend or people who have, you know, maybe not believed in you. Just forget about all that. Let's just think about our breathing right now. Take some deep breaths in. Let it out. Just focus on that for a few next few seconds, maybe a minute or so. I'll give you guys a second. We're just going to meditate on our thoughts. Nothing can, nothing can stop you guys today. Today is your day. Today you're going to have an energy with you that's going to last all day long. And it's going to be nothing but positivity. Any negative arrows that are thrown at you guys are going to bounce right off. You guys are literally bulletproof. I'll give you guys a countdown from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Focus on your breath. 4, 3, 2, one. Now take a deep breath out, take it off, all right? So there's nothing that can stop you guys today, all right? So let's have a seat. Let's get started. Good job, guys. I'm very proud of you guys, all right? Good, good, good. Nice. Did I miss you up there or something? Why? I told you about where I was this weekend. Oh, you were doing some meditation. That's right. I took a page out of your book. That's why you're looking like this. Yeah, you do look younger. I was going to say that. They brought in these two Tibetan monks, and they did meditation. We did meditation. They taught us how to meditate. Like 50 minutes. We didn't realize it was 50 minutes. Yeah. Huh? There were two monks. I guess they're monks. They had. They were dressed orange, as monks at least. Orange. Huh? They had orange. There's a lot of them over here. I think there's yeah, a monastery all somewhere. All over the place, I think. Yeah, I think there's a monastery right I've seen them too. Not sure. Uh, yeah, guys, the important meditation and, and, and breathing is really, really important. Sometimes. Yeah, it's very important, guys. Uh, Sometimes we're just so caught up in something that's already happened, something we have no control over, and we just have to let, you have to just learn to let it go, and just move on with our day, and, and think about the positive, and just right. let go of the negative. Yeah. Just get the negative thoughts out, bring in, think about a vacation, get some kind of positive thoughts in there. Yeah, you picture yourself in the happiest yeah. place you've ever been. That's it. Replicate that. that. Picture where you want your life to be, and focus on that. Good. Yep. That's a good start, guys. I'm really happy that you guys participated in that. Just want to get you guys used to it because you could do this at any time. It doesn't have to be at a mastermind. You could be having a rough day, something you could have just a deal that just died on you, or a family member just called you and cursed you out. Just take a breath, wait, go for a walk, and just do the same thing that we just went over. Good, good. All right, guys, so for, uh, for we're going to go through our, our motions. We'll get started. So, first thing I want to go cover with you guys is the moment of gratuity. Like we do every Monday morning, I just want to. Uh, allow you guys and give you guys the opportunity to just voice what you're happy and what you're most grateful for today. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, start off. I'll give you guys my moment of gratuity. First thing I want to tell you guys is that I am just grateful. I am very, very grateful that the weather now is starting to change because there, for me, there is nothing worse than the winter. I cannot stand a winter. February, and March are some of the worst months for me just because I know that, you know, some days it's nice, some days it's, it's freezing, and now I see that the weather's consistently starting to be warm. So what that does for me is it gives me more life, it gives me more energy. I just love being around that type of weather, it just motivates me. So I'm really grateful now that we're starting to be able to leave the house with no jacket, I can wear a short sleeve shirt, I can let the guns out, I'm just I'm so happy now, I'm just really, really content. So thank you guys, that's my moment of gratuity. 
And uh, I will let Joely pick the next person for us. So you don't know your own strength. <laughs> Dorothy, what are you most grateful for today? And let's dig deep, guys. I know everyone's happy that they woke up today, but let's dig deep. We want to find out more about you. I thank God for having a sound mind. Yeah? Uh, yes. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. So every morning when I wake up, uh, I thank God that I have my mind when I know so many people suffering from dementia as they oh, age. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just grateful yeah. for a sound mind. Absolutely. That and depression, a lot of things out there that people are suffering through. Good, good. We'll do two more. Michael. Uh, today I'm thankful for the opportunity to learn. Mm. Um, just like, like take every opportunity to learn, whether it's a good or bad experience, yeah. learn from it and, and move on and become better. Absolutely. Yeah, we never stop learning. The moment we stop learning, that's when we start to start to digress, start to start to age, start to die. You know, we always have to learn. Up until the day we die, we should always be learning, always be growing. So absolutely, Mike, that's overlooked a lot of times. So, good point. We got uh, Jennifer. She's on the phone. She's on the phone. Can you grab somebody else? Bridget, she's just she's just guy here. She didn't even get a chance to. So I put her coffee down here, but let's go ahead. Bridget, what are you most grateful for today, sweetheart? Oh, um, for that hair, that spectacular looking oh, hair yeah. that you got done? Oh, I wasn't going to mention it. <laughs> um, I'm most grateful for the meeting today. Oh, yeah? Yes, because it gets me going on Mondays, mm -hmm. and it helps carry me through the week. That means a lot to me. I appreciate that. No, because I mean, it, it does take a lot of work to put these things together, as you can see. Yeah, it's not easy. And uh, we really do appreciate your comments. And there is a lot of good information here. It doesn't all come from me. It comes from you guys as well. So I really appreciate you guys saying that. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, we'll move on to our affirmations and our goals. Derek. Derek. Good morning, Derek. Good, good morning. Dapper, man. You got a haircut? Um, I did. I good, did. You're good, you're good. You look sharp. <laughs> Tell us about your affirmation for today or your goal for today or your goal in period or in general, whatever you want to tell us. Um, affirmation, want to, no, I not, not I want to. I am the healthiest that I've ever been and like in the best shape that I've ever been. I can tell, man. I can tell. I see that. Good for you. That's awesome, brother. We have two more? Dorothy, you're a popular gal today. <laughs> What's your affirmation or your goal for today, Dorothy? Um, what are you affirming? That I want to learn something new. Okay. Uh, and the fact that I'm here with all these millennials, <laughs> it gives me energy. It does. So I know I'm very competitive. Mm -hmm. I may be a senior, <laughs> but uh, I can compete with the best of you. You definitely don't look I it. Just, um, and I feed off the, the energy of Good. these young people. I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. You have their soul for breakfast. Yes. <laughs> so Dorothy, the only thing I would, the only thing I would comment on your, on your affirmation, is um, I don't want you to say I will. I want you to say I am or I am going to or you know something like that because we have to believe it. Because a lot of the words that we use are cop outs. Jen. I knew you called me. I was like. Oh, that's okay. You're gonna go next. You'll go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the words that we use are cop outs. Like when we we say I hope or I wish, those are cop outs because if they don't happen. Our mind has already been programmed to say it's okay if it doesn't happen because I only hoped and I only wished. But if I say I am, the brain has no option because the brain starts to believe that it's true and it already has happened. So let's start using our vocabulary in our favor instead of against us. Uh, we'll give Jen, we'll give you an opportunity to do your affirmation or your goal. It actually never changes. It's the same one. I keep reading it every day on my mirror. Yes. Um, I will be a top producer. I, I am will a top producer. I am a top producer. Mm -hmm. I am giving my daughter the life that her and I both deserve. Yes. And I will be successful in my business. Good. You are successful in your business, sweetheart. Yes, you are. Good job, Jen. Love it. Everyone who's here has already won half the battle. Half the battle is showing up. If you notice, the people who show up and participate and do the activities are the people who are the top producers. So you guys are already on your path if you're not there already. Very proud of you guys. Let's do one more. Uh, and I'm here with, um, 
Yes. Beautiful. Thank you, Anna. Appreciate. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Uh, now let's jump into a quote of the day. So this is going to tie right into what we're going to talk about today. So I've I've uh, taken the initiative to start writing out the our our own well my own quotes of the day just because it pushes me a little bit further to start digging deeper into my mind and digging deeper into my message instead of looking for someone else's message. Uh, so I have uh, I'm going to commit myself to giving you guys my my own quotes every week from now on. So I came up with something that's going to fit this uh, meeting today, this this training today very well. Uh, the, the quote I came up with today is that we all have a story. Does yours make you a victim or a victor? Okay, for those of you who don't know, the, the name Victor has, uh, is originated. Is not working too well? Is originated from being victorious. Okay, same thing with the name Victoria. It's victory. So at the end of the day, guys, we want to make sure that we always are conscious if we're a victim or we're a victor. Are we got a, we got a shot now? Is it good? Yeah? All right, good. All right, so um, what does this mean in your life? We're going to cover this today. What does it mean to be a victim? What does it mean to be a victor? And you guys are going to be so surprised on where you might fall on this because we all want to think, our, think of ourselves as being victorious, as being a conqueror, as being a warrior. But are we really doing and saying and thinking the things that victorious people do and say? So today is going to be an eye-opener for a lot of us. I know it was an eye-opener for myself while I did the research. So today we're going to cover that in depth. Okay. We're also going to do some journaling today, guys. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a good activity for you guys. We also have a presentation today around 11, 15, 1130 uh, with U.S. Bank. They're going to come, come in and give us a short presentation uh, we have uh, Nakia McRae, hopefully she will be here, I am praying that she'll make it here on time, that she's going to give us her mastermind presentation. If not, we'll fill in the time with something else. It's not, a, it's not a big deal. I know sometimes people get caught up. Okay, but first, before we jump into any of that, I want to talk to you guys about an article I read over the weekend. I want to start giving you guys a little bit more value when we do these meetings and give you a little bit of an insight on, on the real estate market as well. So, good article, and I'm not sure how many of you guys are subscribed to Inman, but there was a good article on inspection reports. So, I took the liberty of reading this over the weekend so I can share with you guys. Let me see if I can, I don't know why it's not showing. This is weird. Well, let me recap it for you. So, one of the things that in the inspection report that I read here, and I have no idea why it's all shifted to the right, it's very strange. One of the things that it said, there's three things that you should always do to keep your deal together when you have an inspection report come in. First thing is that you must, by all means necessary, you must always be looped in to the inspection report, which means that you need to go through that inspection report. I don't care if it's 50 pages. There is what's called a summary page. You don't have to take off the weekend to read this inspection report. Just look at the summary page, take a highlighter, and then highlight anything that you think as a real estate professional this should be of concern. If you've got a loose handrail or if you've got a leaky faucet, those things could be easily addressed with maybe a credit or maybe don't even have to address them at all. But if you've got things like termites, if you've got things like a structural defect, highlight those things. Then you go back to your client and you start talking to them about what the areas of concern that you see are and you start to compare notes and then you talk to the attorney together because if you let the attorney do all the negotiating for you or let the attorney go through the report, the attorney is going to scare the pants off your client. The guarantee, that's what's going to happen. Normally, the attorney does that because they are just trying to cover their own butt. That's all they're doing. But if you always condition your clients before the attorneys get to them, you will start to have a better effect on them and your deals will stay together much, much better. So what you do is the first thing you do is you explain to them, listen, the attorney is going to go through this report. He's probably going to scare you because that's his job. So when they do scare them, they already know, oh, yeah, Lewis told me you were going to scare me, so I'm not scared anymore. Because when you prepare people for something that's going to happen, it doesn't have that shock anymore. So you explain to them, look, the attorney is going to scare you. That's his job. He's going to try to protect you on every little thing. But a lot of these things can be resolved. And if you have a good home inspector, as the home inspector is pointing things out, he also offers solutions. And if you pick out five things in that report with your client that could be uh, of uh, importance, you can call the home inspector and say, hey, Jim, Bob, whatever the guy's name is, 
you say to them, hey, we have these five things of concern. Do you think they're major? Do you, or how much do you think it would cost to fix these things? If you get a third person who is a non-interested party to give you their, their, their kind of critique on it or their aspect of how you can fix it, it's going to look a lot better than you trying to sell it to them or tell them because they're going to see that you just want to get this thing to closing sometimes. So you want to always introduce a third party to kind of legitimize what you're saying. So your inspector is really important. So make sure you guys are working with somebody who is definitely going to be uh, not on your side, but on the side of sanity in a way where you guys can fix whatever is on that report instead of saying it's the end of the world. I've never yet seen a home that cannot be repaired. There's always a solution for everything. Uh, the other thing I spoke about, uh, we talked about prioritizing, is uh, building a plan of action. So this is the uh, last thing that the article spoke about. Building your plan of action is basically having an execution. So let's say we found five things on that report out of 30 that are major. We found another five that are somewhat important, and then the rest is just cosmetic. We come in there with a plan. First of all, we maybe want to try to get a credit for it because I'll be honest with you, a lot of times when you get the seller to fix something, they fix it just good enough. They don't fix it to the point where it could be of your client's standards. So I always go to try to get a credit first because first of all, it's gonna be quicker. And second of all, because your client could do it the way they want it done. So for instance, if there is a broken slider handle on your back patio door, they're gonna go out and get the cheapest handle and put it on there and then your client's gonna to have to buy one anyway. So why not just get the credit for it, let your client go out and do it afterwards. You know, if it's something that's not stopping you from getting a certificate of occupancy, if it's something that's not gonna stop you from getting the mortgage, then just get the credit. It's gonna be much easier for you guys to negotiate. The seller doesn't wanna keep sending their contractors back there. If they're a flipper, they probably have them off on another job already. Just negotiate the, the, the money. Start a little bit higher than what you normally want to get for it anyway. That way you guys have some wiggle room there. That's just my suggestion. Tom, you had your hand up? Uh, yeah, along the same lines when in the negotiation process. Any, any of these things that come up, try to put a dollar value on them before you start negotiating. I mean, how much is this door handle going to cost? How much is the new, garage, uh, new driveway going to cost? That sort of thing. But put a dollar value on everything so that you've got something to negotiate dollar for dollar. Got it. That's not my slide. That's the wrong one. I'll close that up. I'm confused. Okay, good. Yeah, absolutely. Put a dollar value next to everything you're doing because that way later on it allows you to be able to sum everything up and kind of get an idea of where you guys need to be at. So good advice, Tom. Thank you so much for that. Has anyone ever had an inspection report that has killed the deal? And you're like, oh my God, if I would have navigated that differently, I would have saved this thing. Uh, Tom, you had a, a story well, for I had, I had one that killed a deal one time with an underground oil tank. Yeah, you can give it to him. Yeah, underground oil tanks nowadays are just kind I, of I had one with an underground oil tank, and the biggest problem was that they couldn't get to it. It was, gonna, it was, it was uh, wide enough between the houses to take a wheelbarrow through there, Oof. and they were going to have to dig it out by hand and then cut it up in pieces and wheelbarrow it out, and uh, that got too costly, and uh, the deal came apart. But we ultimately sold it because there's no way that the people could sell the house without, without doing it. it. Yeah. So the seller eventually did this. Yeah, good. You could have negotiated that, I'm sure, if you would have maybe talked some know. more sense into it. I don't know. Wheelbarrows, <laughs> wheelbarrows full of uh, dirt, dirt yeah. and iron yeah. and contaminated walls. Oof, and well, it was contaminated too? Yeah, yeah it was already Yikes. Up. And it was under a deck. Yeah. No, those are the worst. <laughs> you have to prop the house up and <laughs> make sure it doesn't fall it didn't down. Get much yeah, it's pretty bad. And they found it. They found it because they switched from oil to gas, and they left a little pipe coming into beside the furnace, yeah. and it had it had it had it shut off. And somebody said, "Who's who, who, what is this?" Yeah. And they opened the thing up, and, and dust and stuff started coming sure, out. Sure, I get it. It was interesting. Yeah, people think that uh, buying homes and, and investing in properties is simple. There's so many things, so many moving parts, and so many possible pitfalls. It's really, really important for them to work with someone that knows what they're doing. All right, guys, we're gonna jump into our presentation now for today. Our presentation for today is victim or victor. Okay. If you want to end a victim mindset, uh, if you end your victim mindset, you will also end your suffering. So end victim mindset and end suffering is something that I want you guys to remember because the victim mentality is what causes the majority of suffering amongst everyone. If you wanna have a happy life, you want to move on with things that are plaguing you, you just have to change your mindset, guys, from, vic from victim to victor. 
Okay, so right now we're going to talk about some victim mentality signs. Signs that you might have a victim mentality. Okay, so I want you guys to take down some notes if it, if it really does affect you, if it's something that you've found yourself doing. And I'm guilty of these things as well. Don't think that I'm up here preaching and I don't know anything about what I'm talking about because it has definitely been things, every one of these categories, I have found times in my life where I have fallen for it. And I have fallen a victim to these things because I was easier for me to blame someone else, okay? So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is the why me mentality. Why me? Why does the world happen to me? Why is everything happening to me that's so bad? You know, I've, I've sat with people countless times after I've changed my mentality and it's so abundant, but I never used to see it before. I just thought it was normal and commonplace for people to talk that way. And then what we do is a lot of times by talking this way, we start to condition our family, our children, the people around us, that this is acceptable behavior, but it's not acceptable behavior. We cannot say, why me? Oh my God, I can't believe those judges are terrible. Like if you guys saw my basketball video that I just did, I kind of played off of that, why me? And the guy asked me like, oh, what happened last year? Oh, those, those, those refs sucked, they're bums. You know, they were just, they had no idea what they were doing. That's the why me mentality. That's, that's saying that things happen to you, not because of you. So once you start to understand that nothing in your life will ever happen to you, we attract and we bring to us the things that happen. Sometimes things are out of our control. I am 100% in agreement with them. We could be driving down the street, and one day somebody could hit us without us expecting it. That does happen. But you know what? We can't look at those things as like, poor me, why me? Why did I get into a car accident? You know, we don't know. We don't know why things happen. You could have gotten into this car accident because maybe there was a worse one down the road for you that could have been life-threatening. Who knows? We don't know these things. All we can do is be grateful that we're still here and we're still alive and we still have another day to breathe and another day to defend ourselves. So, yes, Tiff? Oh, yeah. You want to care for the mic? Okay. <laughs> Why not me? Why not me? Right? Right. Because so, we're turned around. Right. Why not me? Because nobody ever got to anything great without something hap going through something. So instead of asking why me? Why not me? Right? Why not me? Exactly. In the positive realm. Mm -hmm. You know, why can't I be the next Elon Musk? Why can't I be the next Olympian? Why can't I do certain things? Like Max just came. Why can't I climb a, a mountain? Right? Max, I'm sure, asked himself that when he first started. So many different things like what you said. Why me or why not me? That's a, that's a great example of it. But let's start to think about our lives. And when is the last time we ever said, oh, man, why did this happen to me? Or why did this person break up with me? Or, you know, uh, it's why me, why me, why me? Guys, it's, it's never why me. It's what did I do to bring this on? Or were the signs there the whole time and I was just too blind to see? I've, I've had something. You always have to figure that you have a part to play. You're never 100% out of the equation. You are part of that equation. If you were looking from a third person and it happened to you, then okay, it's why me. But if you were involved, it's part of your life, you will have to understand that it's you plus whatever happened in that situation is why that is happening to you. Now, we can always take this and make it a positive, right? Yes. Why do I have so much money? Why do I have so much success? Why me? Why do I have a, a car, a different car every week? Why do I have so many people that look up to me? These could be positive things too. It doesn't have to be all negative, right? But why me could also be, you know, what have I done right in my life? And can I do more of that? You know, why do I have the great things in my life that I do? What did I do? Maybe I can replicate that. Maybe I can take that in this part of my life and move it into this part of my life where I'm not doing so great. People don't think that way. They don't. They always think automatically the why me negative. But it could also be why me positive. You know, sometimes you think to yourself, why have I been so fruitful and abundant in my life? And, you know, what can I do to show other people that they can do the same thing? So definitely, guys, do not fall into the why me. Don't fall into that mentality because that is victim mentality number one. Number two would be dwelling on the past. We a lot of times think about the past and we live in that past. We cannot forgive others for the past. We cannot forgive ourselves for the past. And the beauty of every day, besides the fact that you all get better looking every day, is that you all get a chance to start over. You guys get a chance to start fresh. If yesterday you had an alcoholic binge, today is an, an opportunity for you guys to never drink alcohol again. Today is an, a chance for you guys to ask for forgiveness. Today is a day that you can forgive others. Today is a brand new day. We all have that opportunity every single day, every single moment, every single minute of our lives. We can stop that dwelling on yesterday. There's been plenty of times when I found myself thinking about 
you know, something that happened to me where I lost so much money. I'm like, oh my God, I lost so much money. I lost so much money. And there are people in my own family who dwell on losing money so much that they block themselves from making more money because they can't move on. I have lost so much money in real estate investing that if you guys would have ever lost that much money in one deal, I guarantee you, you would have never bought another house again. So what did I do? I got right back on my horse. I went back and I just never made that same mistake twice. So that's what you have to start doing. If you, and there's, a, I don't know who saw my feed this morning while I was live, but there is a saying that says, if you have one foot in the past and one foot in the future, then you're peeing on the present. That's exactly what you're doing. So don't do that. You have to be very, you have to be very present in today and forget about tomorrow, forget about yesterday. Just focus on doing the right thing today. Then the steps that are gonna lead you tomorrow and the next day and the next day are gonna be the steps that you want for your life. So we definitely have to stop doing that. There is no, think about, write it down if you guys have it in your head right now. Write down something you've been dwelling on that is just keeps eating at you, whether it's forgiveness for someone else, whether it's something you did wrong, whether it's you know somebody who did you wrong, just write it down and say, you know what, this is the day. Today I'm gonna forgive that person. Today I'm gonna forgive myself. Today I'm no longer. I have I have mental amnesia as of today. I remember nothing besides all the positive things in my life. That's all I'm gonna focus on. I'm gonna remember the times where I was happiest. I'm gonna replicate those days. I'm gonna do more of what's working for me. So that is something that you guys need to do consciously all the time. There's a great book called uh, The Power of Now. I think a few of you guys have seen it or read it. I don't, I don't, that's one of uh, Joelle's favorite books. Um, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, that's a funny name he has. But I'll get that. I'll get that to you guys. It's a really, really great book. A little bit of a difficult read. You guys may have to read some of the paragraphs over and over because it's very deep. But it talks about being present and that nothing can affect you right now in this moment. Whatever thing happened to you in the past is it affecting you right this moment is it affecting the way you breathe can it do anything to you if you were to start juggling right now would you even be thinking about that no because your mind is preoccupied so if you preoccupy yourself on something positive on something you want to build those things in the past they start to disappear but we can't do that unless we accept it that it doesn't affect our lives nothing can affect you in the present nothing nothing that's ever happened can affect you right this moment so just always be present in what you guys are doing. Okay, comparing yourself is a very bad victim mentality. If we ever find ourselves comparing ourselves personally, spiritually, or in a business manner, stop it because you can't. You can only compare yourself to the person that you were yesterday, the person that you were last year. You got to stop thinking about my colleague at work, my neighbor uh, next door. You got to stop thinking about who's driving the nicest car. Or, oh man, I have more skill than that person. How come they get more listings than I do? You gotta stop that. You have to think about what can I do to improve myself? What do I have fault in? What do I have flaws in? What can I do today to start creating a better version of Lewis tomorrow? There was a point in my life where I started to get really envious of other people who were more successful than I was, who had less time in a business, or who didn't even really know much about anything, but they were just good salespeople and they were crushing it. I'm thinking to myself, like, what am I doing wrong, man? I'm doing something wrong. And then I start to get down on myself. I start to feel pity for myself. I throw a pity party and invite myself and, and, and it just, it was the worst time ever. But I started to realize at one point or another that what I was doing is I was feeding myself the wrong stuff. I was feeding my mind the wrong information. What I needed to start focusing on was how can I improve myself a little bit at a time instead of trying to take a page out of their book and do what they're doing because I was throwing myself off. What works for them may not work for me and vice versa or works for me and not work for them. So that's why you cannot do something where you compare yourself. Yes, it is very healthy to have mentors. Yes, it is very healthy to mirror people who are successful, but you never want to compare yourselves. Like I will never compare myself to Warren Buffett, but do I look up to him? Do I read his stuff? Do I watch his videos? Of course I do because I think he's an amazing human being, but I will never say that damn Warren Buffett Oh man, I was right on his tail. I was at 49 billion, he's at 52. No, of course not, I will never. <laughs> but I will always take the best things from different people and I will try to integrate them in my life so I can become a better version of that person that I am in the mirror, okay? Very important. Next thing is unfulfilled with your achievements, okay? We are human nature. We don't give ourselves, we don't give ourselves enough credit, we don't. Sometimes little triumphs, little victories, we don't 
congratulate ourselves on them. You know, there are times when you've had a goal in mind that you wanted to achieve. And once you achieve it, sometimes you're like, oh, well, who cares? It wasn't that big of a deal anyway. Just because you made it reality and you created it. But it is a very big deal. It's a very big deal for yourself. And it's a very big deal for people who are on their path to wanting to do what you just accomplished. So live that live that moment guys really congratulate yourselves give yourself some recognition tell as many people about it as you possibly want to in a good way obviously you don't want to boast in a way where you're making other people feel bad but just let people know how proud you are of yourself that you were able to do that i'm going to put someone in the spot right now who loves to get the attention but joelle who tried to get her real estate license many 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 times when she finally did do we got the camera on her when she finally did it was one of the proudest days of her life. And, you know, she tells everyone now, you know, about her being a real estate agent. And I keep telling her, stop telling people you're a real estate agent. You're a manager. She, but she's so proud that she's a real estate agent because she passed that and she lives that, you know, and she really is grateful that she was able to do it. It's a big accomplishment for a lot of people. So I'm wrong for, you know, downplaying that. But I always think to herself that she shouldn't sell herself short. She should expand more on what she does. But being a real estate agent means a lot to her. So that's a victory that she always, always wants to make sure that people are conscious that they know that she's, she's done. So same thing with you guys. Whatever you've accomplished, it could be big or small. You got your first closing. You got your first listing. You got, you know, circle of excellence. Whatever it is, guys, if you're proud of it, just make sure that you don't, it's not short-lived. Give yourself that credit. And then move on to the next goal because we can never be complacent. Once we reach a goal, what we need to do is we need to start to re-strategize. Okay, I've made it this far. What worked for me during this path? What can I replicate and do more of? And where do I want to be next? Right? I'm, I'm constantly always challenging myself. I'm always giving myself goals that I know are scary. Like, will I fail? Maybe. Maybe I'll fail. But I want to take that risk because if I don't, then I'll never know if, it, if it's going to happen. So that's what you guys need to do is always give yourselves that fulfillment and gives you and give yourself also new new and clear goals after you've achieved them after you've given yourself a pat on the back at least giving yourself a little time to enjoy it okay uh being withdrawn from others right i'm a big proponent guys i'm a big big huge proponent because i've done both of being around other people for synergy for energy for ideas for everything basically because when we're reclusive and we're in our homes and we're trying to get work done yeah sometimes we're a little bit more how would i say we're a little bit more productive but not all of us and the majority of us what's going to happen is we're going to get into a rut and we're going to kind of start to get stagnant because we're not around other people with other ideas we're not around other people with other um how would i say with other goals so if we consistently work always from remote places or we never go anywhere and socialize with people, we start to become people that are kind of not a big fan of humanity, okay? We're not, we're not looking at each other as, as, as our comrades anymore. We're not looking at each other as friends. We're not looking at each other as, as people that we can build with, as partners, as associates. We start to look at each other as, oh, I haven't seen you in a month. Uh, I wonder what you've been up to. And it kind of gets weird, right? So I'm not, really, I'm not really a big fan of doing that. I tried that, guys. I'm going to give you an example. There was a moment in my life where I worked every day from an office, from the office that I was a realtor at. And then there was a moment in my life where I worked exclusively from home. Yes, I got a lot of work done and I used to drop off piles once a week and they were like, wow, we haven't seen you in a week, but thank you for you know, three more listings, whatever it was. And I always found that when I'd come into the office, it was weird. Like I didn't mesh well with people. When I, I didn't feel like a sense of belonging. But then when I did what I do best is produce and spend time around other people, my productivity went up even further. The reason why is because I had other people to measure myself against. At home, I can't measure myself against anyone. I don't know what other people are doing. I don't know the new trends. I don't know about that new listing that just came to the office. I don't know a lot, a lot of things, and I'm putting myself in a position where I'm feeling negativity towards others because I am being that person, that hermit crab, that person who just doesn't want to be with anyone else, isolated. Now, sometimes we create our own prisons in our head and we don't come around for whatever reason we have in our head. Oh, people don't like me. Oh, you know what? I don't fit in. I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm too this. I'm too that. I'm whatever. We create these things in our mind that really don't exist. But to us, we feel that they do. And what we're doing is we're creating our own prison where we're isolating ourselves from other people when the opposite is true. 
You should be around more people. You should show your face more and you should smile more because people, at the end of the day, we all have the same self-doubt. We all have that same thing in, uh, same thing in us that can go either way. We wake up in the morning, if we get too much negativity, we may fall negative. If we get a lot of positivity, we go, might, might go positive. So once you get up in the morning, don't tell yourself that I'm not good enough. I shouldn't be around. I don't do enough business to be around other people. They're gonna start thinking I'm terrible. Guys, you just need to be present. And believe it or not, sooner or later, you, things will start to fit. And you'll get business just by default, just by being around. That's why I always say, guys, showing up is half the battle. I, I will tell you this as many times as I can that the people who are around more are the people who get more business. Not just because you're you're visibly present and people give you leads, just because you will be able to learn so much more and you'll get so many more ideas that that is a really big important factor for you guys to start thinking about when you plan out your week. Okay, so never be withdrawn from other people. It is a blessing to be around other people. The blame game. We've all we've all been, I'm sure, very, very familiar with this before. The blame game is something that we've all played and we blame other people for our shortcomings we blame other people for our losses and we never want to take full responsibility I learned a long time ago that the sign of a good business person is someone who takes responsibility for their team's actions or for someone else's actions that are they're directly beneath them you guys ever heard the term the fall guy right the fall guy is the person within a company that when a company gets in trouble for something they throw that guy under the bus and they say it was because of him that's why we did that but how often do you see the CEO say I don't care whose fault it was it might have been his it might have been hers who knows but I'm the CEO and under my watch everything is my fault in the moment you start seeing leaders do that that's when they start to become great people because they're they're putting themselves in a line of fire right do you guys remember a long time ago generals presidents all these people were the first ones on the, on, on, the, on, the, on the battlefield, first ones. Now you don't see that anymore. Now you see all the pawns, all the soldiers go out and take the chance with their lives. But the thing is that we've created that kind of society because nobody wants to be that fall guy. Nobody wants to take the blame for anything. And it's always somebody who is, you know, the guy in the mail room who didn't deliver the mail whose fault it should be. No, it's, it's the fault of the person who, who, sh who runs the organization, runs the family, runs the business whatever it is you have to take responsibility for other people not to mention yourself like we're not even talking about ourselves yet so let's just say we're 30 pounds overweight oh it's because my wife never cooks anything healthy it's all her fault it's because my parents they never showed me how to eat right when i was a kid it's everyone else's fault there's no time in the day my boss doesn't give me 30 minutes for a lunch break there's no healthy places around me all those things are, are what's called the blame game. We're blaming other people for the reason why we're not what we want. So the moment we can identify this, the moment we can move on and we can start to get things that we want for our lives, become the person that we want to become. Guys, I am I'm, a, I'm definitely a perfect example of the blame game. And a lot of time um, I was overweight. Like I always tell you guys, I've lost a lot of weight since uh, the days when I was doing mortgages and real estate at the same time. And when people used to ask me, why you put on my weight? Yeah, you know, I never have any time because I'm doing both real estate and mortgages. And it took for me, it took for me to go through the real estate crash to kind of put everything back into perspective and remember how important it was for me to be and feeling good about myself and be in the best shape of my life. Because only when I did that is when I started to kind of have a different mentality and start to have different values and different ways that I would carry myself. And then I put everything back to perspective. And then now the puzzle fit perfectly before I had a puzzle that I was missing pieces to. And once I started to kind of figure things out where, wait, I gotta stop blaming my business. I gotta stop blaming my lifestyle. I gotta start looking within myself first, fix that. Once I fix that, then everything else doesn't become a blame game anymore. Everything else starts to become you know, the, the, the game that you wanna play, the game of life, the game where you control the pieces and you control the outcome. So the moment you start letting go of that blame game is the moment you start growing. Okay, labeling yourself as a failure. A lot of these, a lot of these characteristics, a lot of things that I'm, um, I'm saying right now, I have these people in my head for each one because I, I feel like there's characters in my life who have said these exact things to me, and even though I was always kind of telling them, "Dude, you're thinking wrong, you're thinking wrong," I never really knew that they all fall into this victim mentality category. But labeling yourself as a failure before you've even done it, or before you even given yourself the opportunity to master it, is just 
what's that called? It's a, a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if you come up here on stage and you say, I'm terrible at speaking, but I'm going to speak anyway, you've already labeled yourself as someone who can't speak. So why even bother? You've already taken yourself out of the game. We can never do that. That's why we do these morning affirmations, because when we do these affirmations, we condition our brains to know that we're not a failure. Even though we haven't achieved it yet, even though we don't have it in our lives yet, I'm going to train my mind to say that I have, right? I'm going to tell you guys that Culture Estate is a nationwide company. Culture Estate is one of the biggest real estate companies in the country. And that's because I believe it. I know it. You know how many times I get people coming to me saying, oh, it, real estate's changing. Things are different now. Everyone's working from home. And, you know, these things are, are, are so yesterday. And you got to think like Uber. You got to think like these people. You know what? That may be the case, but I'm not going to sell my company short and, and with your seeds of doubt because I have a belief in what I can do with my company. And if it fails, it fails under my watch. And then I shift. I move into something else. But you can never let yourself become a failure before you've ever taken the opportunity to try. Okay, so I can easily say, you know what, opening this real estate company was going to be really hard. You know, I'm not going to take the chance. I'm already called myself a failure. I already said that I was going to fail before I even tried. So a lot of people, not, not so many people in this room, because you guys have taken the, you guys have taken the role as a real estate agent where nothing is guaranteed. Everything is, everything is up to you. So if you were the kind of people who, who thought you were failures, you would have never went for your real estate exam. You would have never given yourself this opportunity to make as much money as a, as a doctor, make as much money as a chemist. You know, there's no limit to how much money you guys can make in this business. It's all up to you. So for anyone who has that mentality, you're definitely not a failure because you're already giving yourself that opportunity to make it happen. But now let's look at other parts in our life where we might be labeling ourselves a failure. Are you labeling yourself a failure in your health? Are you labeling yourself a failure in uh, public speaking, communications, your family life, your spirituality, whatever else might be uh, maybe not so strong in your life, never say that you're bad at something. You know, you may want to commit. Like I always say, you know, I joke around, I'm a terrible dancer, which I am, I'm a pretty bad dancer, but you know what? It's, it's not a priority for me right now. If it was a priority for me and then we had to dance every Monday morning, then I'd probably start taking dancing lessons or I'd start to ask you guys to help me out. But you know, you, you got it. When the things that are important in your life that you're going to always use and, 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 and have as a tool, those things you have to start giving yourself the ability to say, I'm not a failure. I'm going to master that. I'm going to do well with prospecting. I'm going to crush every single door that I knock on. And I'm going to make sure that people don't forget me when I leave their house. Those are the things that you need to concentrate on. You're not a failure. You guys are just not giving yourselves the opportunity to become a winner yet. Okay? So now we have to change our, our, our train of thought. Not being able to forgive. We talked about this a little bit before. Not being able to forgive. People have power over you whether you like to think about it or not. The people who still aggravate you, the people who you still say, I hate that person. It takes. A, I, I remember a wise person once told me, it takes more energy to hate than it does for you to not give any crap about it whatsoever. So if you guys use the word hate, I can't stand, oh my God, that person drives me insane, like, or that thing happened to me, it just drives me up the wall, you're giving too much power to that. You're giving too much power to that person. We have to learn to forgive people who have done us wrong, we have to learn to forgive ourselves, and we have to learn to forgive circumstances. It's okay guys, let it go, because you're spending too much time, too much energy, on that and you're not allowing yourself these new blessings that are ready for you that are coming down at any moment but you're blocking them you're you're literally blocking them because you're focusing on this right here meanwhile all these things are coming here and you're over here you can't do both guys you have to you have to leave yourself open for all blessings you can't get blessings while you're worrying about ways to do other people wrong there's nothing worse than not forgiving the only thing worse than that is trying to get back at those people the only way you can get back at those people is by making yourself so super successful and so super happy then that person's like damn all my efforts I'm trying to bring the person down it's worthless let me just give up because they're spending their energy I'm trying to bring you down meanwhile they're getting nowhere what are they doing they're making themselves more impoverished they're making themselves more miserable don't let them have any power any energy over you whatsoever you need to be that person who is like I said before bulletproof like what is that person have for breakfast oh my god they're always so positive nothing can take them down and guys, this is not easy. I will tell you, people get under my skin. But then I start to realize that I'm letting this person have too much control over me, too much power over me. You know, there is nothing worse than giving someone the power, the energy that you need to be successful, 
and you're giving it to this person so you can have a miserable existence. Don't do it. Let it go. It's, it's not up to them. It's up to you how you live your life and what you think about yourself. There's a saying, there's a, there's a great quote that says, uh, lions do not trouble themselves over the thoughts of sheep uh, or something like that along those lines. But think about it, right? Does a lion really care what sheep say about them? Yeah. Are, you, are you a lion or are you a weak sheep? You got to ask yourself. Another weak sheep will, will care about what the other sheep are saying. But if you're a lion, if you're powerful and you can build empires and you can do endless possibilities with your life, do you really care what these haters are saying about you? What these people who have nothing better with their lives but to take you down mentally and physically and spiritually, do you care what they have to say about you? You should, have, you should not. I don't care. I believe me, guys. If anyone gets targeted, I get targeted all the time. There's people who hate me because I'm successful. There's people who hate me because uh, they they're miserable. There's people who hate me because I'm not part of the organization. There's, believe me, I get a lot of that. But you know what? That should fuel you. If anybody is hating you, that's a sign of a good thing. It means you're going places. You're doing good things. You have possibility. People get intimidated when you do well. So they see something in you which they don't see in themselves, and they're not comfortable with that. And the funny thing is it could come from within your circle sometimes. It could come from within your family. It could come from within your friends. And you need to identify those people and say, you know what? I'm going to give this person a little distance for a while and put them on timeout. And let's see what happens in my life. Because if you're allowing these people too much time, too much attention, too much power, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to find yourself in a place that you don't want to be in. And that's not good. We can never have those moments, guys. The moment you start to be like this is not productive time, which means that you do not do things that are good for you. Okay, being angry and bitter all the time. Sometimes we are angry and we show it without even realizing it. We're bitter and we don't even realize it. But other people pick up on our energy. We walk into a room and people already know, ooh, what's wrong with this guy today? And it's happened to me. I'm sure there's been people in the room who have seen me upset sometimes. But you never, wanna, you never want to do anything that's worthwhile while you're angry or bitter. Right? That's an easy thing to say, right? But how easy is it to actually do it? It's not very easy. It's very difficult. And I've, I've practiced this with, with Derek. I've shown you guys that before you do anything that's worthwhile, you have to change your state. How do you change your state? There's a, there's a ton of ways. Everybody is different. You can sing. You can dance. You can scream. You can pound your chest. You can do, listen to music that excites you. You can do whatever it is to do. You can do some stretching, some exercise, anything but do not do anything that's worthwhile while you're angry or while you're bitter and try to, and there's a there's a real great i would say science behind it but you guys should always kind of try to analyze your state at any given time if you feel yourself going into that one state stop at, stop everything you're doing don't do anything else until you have a talk with yourself you don't have to be audible it could be in your head have a talk with yourself go for a walk give yourself some oxygen and just think about what are the consequences if I continue acting like this today? What am I going to get out of today? It's worth to spend 15 minutes talking to yourself, cooling down, than it is to spend the rest of the day angry and bitter. You will not accomplish anything, and if you do, it's going to be fruitless. Who has ever tried to prospect while they're pissed off? Who has ever tried to make anything that's worthwhile while they're angry and bitter? It, you get nothing because the energy is not only transferable in a room, it's transferable over your voice. It's transferable all over yes there's a real thing guys called energy and I'm a big believer in it energy we all have it we all we all run on energy we're all electric and we give off different vibes at all times if somebody walks into a room and they're they're acting different you get that right away you feel that right away but if somebody comes into a room like I see Jen Jenna come in a room she's vibrant she's a firecracker I get her energy I feed off of her I, you know like I Sometimes we need that, guys. We need to be in an environment where people are like that. And if we find ourselves where everyone is just all around talking about how bad the economy, how bad real estate is, and how bad everything is, then we also start to think that too. So let's not be angry and bitter. If you're not going to do it for yourself, then do it for the other people around you. Do it for your family. Do it for the people that you know you, that mean something to you. And you know that's that's something that I think we all need to work on because I find myself sometimes, a lot of times, very very commonly, I find myself getting into that state. I have to stop, I have to shake it off, you know, like, um, if you, who's been to the Tony Robbins events, anyone? You guys listen to him? There's a guy, there's a guy uh, that uh, does his, uh, his events at the um, UPW, the Unleash the Power Within events, his name is Joseph McLennan, right? 
Joseph McLennan, that's his name. The third, I think, is his name. What he teaches is um, there's a he he coined it. It's like shake, like ask, aspirate. What does he call it? It's a thing. But what he says, what he says is that you can never be angry if you're shaking your ass. So he makes everyone get up and shake their ass. And he's like, you can never be angry. So if you ever find yourself getting angry, just shake your ass. And if you shake your ass, then you'll automatically smile. The person watching you is going to smile and it starts to become contagious. And then you forget about what you were mad about most of the time if it's not that bad. But it really does help. I mean, if, you, if I catch you guys shaking your ass in here, I won't think anything is wrong with you. If you guys see each other, believe me, I just know, okay, okay, woosa, woosa, guys, it's okay. You know, it'll be fine. Okay. When you start not to care about your appearance, right, this is a really bad thing that happens to people when they're starting to fall into that victim mentality. If you find yourself to be in that mindset where you don't care about what you look like anymore, you let your beard go crazy, you let your hair just look like a bird's nest, you know, you can't do anything that's worthwhile when you don't feel good about your appearance. If you, you know, if you spend your whole life in workout clothes, you guys got to think to yourself, okay, well, if people see me, are they going to perceive me, right? Because people perceive each other and they judge each other from the first appearance. What are they going to think about me? I might know all the information in the world. I might be a very, very knowledgeable person, but people, unfortunately, they do judge you on appearance. And if you start to spend every day of your life like this, it's going to affect your business. It's going to affect the way that you produce and it's going to affect also the way you feel. Now, it's a vicious cycle because if that happens, then that means that you start feeling bad about yourself, which means you start to fall into a victim mentality, which means you start to dress even worse, which means you start to get even less business. And it's a really bad cycle. You don't want to catch yourself. You don't get caught in. So I would say do an experiment. Do a really good experiment. For the guys out there that are watching and listening, <clears throat> come into the office one day with a suit. For no apparent reason. No, you don't have to have a listing appointment that day. A suit, nice polished up shoes, looking really nice, spiffy, pressed, everything. Haircut, beard done, everything looking good. Wait till you see how many compliments you get and what you, how you feel about yourself that day. And then another day, come in with the worst outfit you've got. And see how you feel, see how the day goes, and see what people say about you. Okay, not that we are going to feed 100% on what people say to us or, or, or say about us, but it's more about the way that we feel personally. Like I personally like to dress in a business casual attire, but I always make sure my clothes are ironed, clean, pressed, whatever, all that, because I want to feel good about myself. I want to make sure that people know that I do care about my appearance because people see you and they make a judgment. You know, it, it's, it's, it's bad enough that I'm pretty young compared to a lot of real estate agents in this industry. So <clears throat> I have to go up when I was selling, I had to go up against 50 something, 60 somethings, and I had to prove myself, you know, you don't want to show up in a pair of baggy jeans and in a wrinkled t-shirt. That's not the way you want to carry yourself. So make sure that you care about your peers. You show up nice. You, you always look good. Your clothes don't have to be fancy. This is literally an $8 shirt, probably from Walmart. I think we got it, but it's clean. It's pressed, you know, and it, and it symbolizes something I believe in. So. As long as it makes you feel good, guys, it doesn't have to be uh, Armani shirt or boss or a boss outfit or anything like that. It could be anything you want, as long as it's presentable. Next thing is rejections become personal. When you start to take people's uh, rejections, like people reject us all the time, right? That's our job. We have to get rejected. Without rejection, we don't get any accomplishments. If you start taking rejections to the heart. Oh, this person just didn't give me their listing just because you know what because I'm Spanish because I'm a girl because I'm black because I'm this because I'm fat because I'm that that starts to become your victim mentality when you start to think about rejections as something against you this girl didn't go out on a date with me what's wrong with her oh it's because I'm broke oh my god I'm broke so you know what I'm depressed now and I'm just gonna go hang out in my house by myself and do nothing play video games and be more broke it's it you got to catch yourself you can never if anything let it be the fuel that fires you, right? Let it be that spark that's going to cause great things to happen in your life. If somebody rejects me today, good. I'm use that rejection. I hope they reject me to the point where it hurts because if they do, that really will excite me. I've been rejected so many times, guys, and that's when I changed my life. I was rejected as a kid in school. My teacher told me I was stupid. From that day on, I was an A student after that. I've been rejected in business all the time. What happens? I start to become a top producer. I was rejected as a barber. Nobody wanted to sit in my chair. What happened? I became the best barber where nobody can get a seat with me anymore. It's all how you perceive rejection. And I love rejection. I hope you guys do too because if you don't, you're in the wrong business. 
we're in the business of getting rejected. The more rejections I get, the closer I am to winning. So make sure that you kind of condition your mind to that and start to think about a rejection as having a monetary value. Every time someone tells you no, every time somebody hangs up the phone, every time somebody curses you out, you, 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 you let it go and you say, yes, I just made some money with that person. Because you move on, you go on to the next person, and eventually if you get enough no's and enough rejections, you start to get better, you start to get more wise with your words, and you become a superstar. And all those rejections led you to be the person you are today. Tom? If you evaluate those rejections, why do I get rejected yes. in this business? That's really important in this business. It absolutely you is. You just evaluate what you're doing all the time. Absolutely. I, I agree. You, you, they're valuable. Rejections are valuable because you're being rejected for a reason. If somebody rejects you all the time for the same reason, oh, I've never heard of your name before. Oh, I've never heard of your name before. Oh, I don't know who you are. The next time you call someone, you say, you may have never heard my name before, but I am the top producer in my office. I am the fastest growing real estate agent in my community. I am this. You take their legs out before they even have an opportunity to hit you with that. So that way, if you know that's what you're getting, you got to get better. Tom? How about I've never heard of your company before? <clears throat> Good. You should. All the time now, right? Yeah. And you know what? Tom teaches you guys some great dialogue where you kind of tell them. <clears throat> you may have never heard of it before, but we're the fastest growing real estate company in this area. And then you know what? They're kind of like, oh, well, let me not ask again then because you just already told me. So, yes, you do have to take rejection and learn from it and not become a victim to rejection. And lastly, guys, <clears throat> a victim mentality, a victim never takes risk. A victim always plays it safe, super safe, safe to the point where you become so complacent, you go nowhere with your life, right? Do we all have aspirations for ourselves? Absolutely. What are we doing? Are we moving towards them or are we moving away from them? The reason you guys are a real estate agent today is because at one point in your life, you said to yourself, I have an aspiration for myself and I want to take a risk. And those of you who did take that risk, you've already accomplished that. And just like you accomplished that, you can accomplish other things. You can accomplish your health goals. You can accomplish your life goals. You can accomplish things that are so outlandish that you think you could have never done. You can accomplish them all. Everything is possible if you believe and you work towards it every day. You have to meet opportunities halfway. Opportunities don't just land on your lap for being a nice person, for getting up early. You have to work, guys. You have to work your ass off. And the harder you work, strange things happen. The harder you work, the more opportunities start to show up. And people start to think from the outside. People who are watching you from the outside start to say, that Jen, she's so lucky. What? Are you so lucky, Jen? How did you do it? You just, you know what? Jen's just blessed. She's just lucky. That's it. That's their... That, it's persistence, but that's everyone's mentality that, you know what, let me not work hard. Let me just call it luck, and that'll make me feel better. That way I can go on with my life, but it's not, guys. It's perseverance. It's persistence. It's all of the above. It's all the things that we just talked about that are going to make you <clears throat> successful, and with this topic, taking risks, if you're in a mental rut, if you let all of these other things happen to you, Will you ever want to leave the safety of your little life? You're never going to want to leave that because you're so incapable of getting outside of your head that you can't ever think that anything else is possible. And you start to kind of already plan out your funeral. You know, at 20 years old, I hear, I hear people already saying, I'm never going to mount to anything. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do this. And you know, I'm, I'm happy with that, you know, because they've already <laughs> given up on life. I will never stop growing, guys. You should never stop growing either. I will be working and hustling to the day I die. You know, I've learned that from my father. He's, he's 80 years old now. God bless him. He just turned 80 last month. And he's working harder today than most people I know at 80. Okay? Even harder than me. Guy wakes up earlier. I can't keep up with him. He's a savage, but I model myself around people like that because I want to build something that is going to outlast me. I may only be alive for the next couple decades, but I want whatever I build live on forever and I wanted the message that I deliver to affect other people they'll change their lives too that's when you know you make an impact the day you know you make an impact is the people that you help also help other people and help other people and you start to build this domino effect that's going to change lives of generations yeah that's the thing that's the thing with life yeah Jen go ahead please or give her the mic so going back to what you said in regards to like um caring of what other people think of you and stuff like that. Yeah. I actually used to be that person and it wasn't up until 
I actually became a mother where I was like, why do I care so much about what they are saying about me? And what do I care so much of trying to live up to their expectations? And once I let that go and the negative people that were in my life, I actually said, if you're not watering me and, and helping me grow, then I need to put you to the side. And that's something that has actually has been helping me so much yeah. to be a better person, a better mom, a better friend. And um, just you just got to let go and let yeah. God. That's you said it. it all the time. Like you had so many doubters, right? So many haters saying that you weren't going to make it in real estate. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and they were now? my own family. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going I'm not going to call you out. You know who you are. <laughs> I won't touch that. I won't touch that. Listen, when my first year in real estate, I couldn't get business for my family. They wouldn't give it to me. You know, but fast forward, you know, I I think I did okay. Absolutely. You just got to keep going. Keep going. That's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. Good for you, Jeff. Thank you for that comment. That was awesome. Uh, guys, I mean, give me give me your feedback. Tell me what you guys are thinking because these are my 12 points. I'm going to take some feedback and then I'm going to have you guys journal a little bit. Just to test you guys and see where your head's at. Anyone else have anything to add? Tom, you're always good for a comment. As many, of these, as many of these things that you just talked about that you can eliminate, mm-hmm. the better off you're going to be and the quicker you're going to amount to something if that means something absolutely i mean i hey i've been through most of those i mean i I came to new jersey in 1985 and i didn't know a damn soul in new jersey except my wife and i got into real estate business and you think that ain't tough oh man you know you think that's not tough it's tough yeah and the first year i was in the business i didn't make any money yeah and the second year in the business i made some money and the third year i was in the business i thought my god i can't spend all this money Mm -hmm. you know so uh, don't think you can't do it, but you got to eliminate most of these things up here. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, I'll be honest with you. It's a lot easier to do these things on, on, the, on, on the TV here, on the on computer. So much easier to do those things because it takes, all the, it takes all the risk and the responsibility off of us. But the minute we start taking control of our lives, I think Alejandro wants to say something. You can give him the mic. Uh, but the minute we start taking control of our lives and start to identify these things is the minute that we start to really live our lives and accomplish the things we want. Alejandro, what are you going to say? Yes, uh, who you surround yourself with mm-hmm. is uh, make a big impact. It does. Since sometimes you had the friend since you was a kid, but mm-hmm. you know, they don't bring anything positive to your life, so it's better just be by yourself. Uh, exactly. Sometimes if you can't find anybody positive, guys, just be by yourself and surround yourself around books, videos, um, blogs, podcasts, anything that is going to feed your mind and, and give and be your circle. If you can't find a circle, you know what's going to happen. You start to do that enough, you'll find like people. You'll you'll hear about meetups. You'll say, um, I think we have someone in the back that has, uh, Jen has uh, her hand up. You'll start to find people because like attracts like, right? This is a universal law, right? Birds of a feather flock together. All of these things are universal. You know, the Bible says, show me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. You know, it's so many things that you guys can circle back to and say you know what they were right all along my parents had all the right you know tell me not to hang out with that floozy hang out with that troublemaker it's true guys uh, Jen um, I actually agree with Alejandro and I always said it when it comes down to it positivity attracts positivity negativity attracts negativity yep. you know there were certain times in my life where you know things would just go really bad and mm-hmm. it's like everything was going downhill but the minute I started to take certain people out of my life and out of my circle it's that's when everything kind of yeah. started to improve. Yep. So honestly, I think it's a huge factor. I, think I so definitely so. think it's a huge factor. Esther. <laughs> so I actually have a question. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> so I didn't know to have like rest and bitch face. <laughs> oh, <me too. laughs> I am very guilty of that. So I'm working on it. And it's like certain times, even if I'm upset or. Or just like I'm kind of neutral. Yeah. I don't realize it, but um, other people feel as though like I'm angry and they're like, mm-hmm. "Oh, what's wrong?" Yeah. And I'm just like, "Oh, nothing." It's like, so, it, <laughs> so how do you kind of get over that? Yeah. Good. Um, and I, love the I guess let people know like, okay, you're welcome because I've been told like I look intimidating, and I'm just like, why? I'm like the nicest person to get to know. Uh-huh. So how do you like? For an individual like myself, how do I get bypass that um, to let people know, like, okay, you can say hello. I'm going to say hello back. Like, I'm actually a cool person. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's easy to say that, right? It's easy to say that. 
Okay, uh, Esther, that's an amazing question. I was actually going to talk about that today earlier in my uh, live feed, but I decided to speak about having people come to the uh, mastermind. Uh, I am a, I am the most resting bitch face person you'll ever meet in your life, right? And yes, I've been, I've been told that I felt you were mad at us before you started your presentation. I've been told all these things that I had no idea. My lunch lady in school, this is when I first found out that I had it in school as a little kid. The lunch lady said, what's wrong? I said, nothing. Why? She said, because you look angry. I think I do. I think I'm, I, 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 and then ever since then, I've just kind of been like, oh, well, I guess that's the way I am. But then when people get to know me, they, they know I'm very funny, charismatic, all these things, but we, they don't give each other the, the opportunity to. So the only thing I want you, I want you to understand from it is embrace who you are. If you're not negative, but you look negative, be at peace with that. I have come to peace with that because people want me to be a different way. And I don't want to live my life for other people. If I know I'm not troubled, if I know I'm not angry, if I know that I'm going to make conversation with somebody, they'll know soon enough anyway. There is a word that I learned, not that I learned, but that I heard over the weekend. They made me feel very comfortable with, with this. And that word is, uh, you see it on, on the TV right here, is stoic. Stoic is a person that can endure pain or hardship without showing their feelings or complaining. That is me. I don't show feelings and emotion. What is that? I don't. So it's a positive too. It doesn't have to be a negative. You'd be a great poker player, I'm sure, just like I would be. You would be great. Sure, please. Uh, I have that issue too. I have had that issue since I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it also, uh, speaking to someone who had the issue before, has to do with what you're thinking about. So sometimes we don't really think about our face because yeah. we're inside our head yes. thinking about, we could be worrying thinking. about whatever so you ever meet somebody who's you know happy excited you, you can see it in their face even like you mm -hmm. you might have a resting face but if i see you and i know you're thinking about something happy i know you're happy you have a smile on your face yeah, sure. so it could be sometimes what you're thinking about like we got to constantly check in and say yeah. what am i thinking about right now? am i okay you mm -hmm. know what energy am i giving off am i yeah. you know i might be thinking about some bills i gotta pay sure. so i might be you know i might look um what I'm like, what I'm thinking about. Yeah, so definitely got to check in and make sure that we're Present. not bringing our issues with us wherever we go. We're trying to be happy. Mm -hmm. You got to leave some of that stuff outside. You yeah. know what I mean? And come in with a different attitude. Yeah, that's something I learned too, guys. I learned this from Harry that you always have to be present no matter what you're doing. And sometimes I catch myself trying to work and be with my daughters at the same time. You can't do both. You got to do one. Always be present because if you're not present, you might show up with all that stuff in your head into a room where you should be networking, but you're thinking about other things. <laughs> And it's not that you're being uh, rude or anything, but you have so much on your mind. Now, I think this is the biggest attribute to a person being uh, an introvert. I'm an introvert. I've gotten over it and gotten a lot better. But an introvert is not a bad thing. An introverted person means that they do a lot of thinking. An introverted person thinks a lot before they do anything, and sometimes to their own demise. But an introverted person shows up with a stoic face because they're all, their mind is somewhere else, constantly thinking, always, always building, always growing something. And, you know, I get asked a lot of times, like, what's in that head of yours? I know you're thinking of something. Like, I always get asked that because I am a lot of times very quiet. I could be with you for hours and I may not say much. It's because I'm always thinking. And that's okay, guys. I mean, you can do that. I, I, you can change being introverted to an extent as long as you're conscious of it. And the people around you, and once they start to get to know you, they will understand that it's not you that you have an anger issue or anything like that. It's just that you have this way about you. You carry yourself very in a, in a stoic manner. So I love this word. This word made me feel very comfortable about the way I am and about hopefully it makes you feel about the way you are because being like that is not always a bad thing. So if you know what, if you show all your cards, if you show all your emotions, great, that works for you. And as long as I know I'm not carrying bad energy, I'm fine. I don't have to be to your level. I don't have to be as excited as you are all the time. And I'm definitely not going to be the, the grumpiest person in the room either. Just let me be and I, I, will, I will let people know that I have you know, good traits about me as well. As long as you know they give me the opportunity and if people don't want to give you the opportunity because of the way you look that's okay you don't need to have everybody in the world like you just focus on you being happy so I really love I, I this weekend you actually read my mind this word came to me and I said you know I love it now I, I, I am me and no one else so remember that okay yes Jim to talk about the, uh, just the forgiveness and anger please you know when you that person's in your head. They're renting space in your head. Mm -hmm. They're probably on there doing their day. They're not even thinking about you. Yep. And they're just, you know, you got to, whether you do the meditation, you got to mm -hmm. get that, them thoughts out of your head. Just free yourself of that because. Exactly. You know, they're, you're thinking about them. You can't go on with your day. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and like I said, the rent, the rent is facing your head. Yeah. They're, they're off doing their day. They're not even thinking about you. Just you're think, not even a thought to them. Exactly, right? Jim, just think about this, right? Let's just say you make a post, right? You post something about Greenbrook. And some know-it-all Greenbrook person goes on there and says, you know nothing about Greenbrook. You've only lived here 30 years. I've lived here 80 years. And you have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> that person just invested 10 seconds. They moved on with their life. Oh, and, and they're doing something else. And you're dwelling on how bad your posts are and how much. And you're the rest of the day, you're in this mood. That person has so much power over you because oh, yeah. if you let them get that power over you, yep. you can't. I am starting to identify that more and more in my life that I let a lot of people have power over me and about over my day. And I, and I can't. I can't do it. Yep. Not doing it anymore. Enough is enough. Okay. Good. Okay. So now I'm going to have you guys do an exercise, if you would not mind. I want you guys to, on paper or on your pad, on your computer, your phone, whatever you got to, whatever you've got to write on, I want you guys to name 10 facts about yourself. Just 10 facts. It could be anything. It could be my hair is brown, my eyes are blue, I am, I drive a Nissan, I have a job that I do this, or uh, I like to go skiing, whatever. Just 10 facts about yourself. And we're going to start to analyze ourselves, okay? We're going to start to see if our train of thought is really where it should be, if our mentality is really where it should be. So I'm, I'll do this exercise with you guys as well. It's a little unfair for me because I know the exercise, but I will try to participate either way. But I want you guys to uh, just write down 10 facts about yourself. It's a good exercise. I guarantee you guys won't regret it. If you guys are watching 10 facts about yourself that are important to you, I would say, the things that are define you, things that are a part of you. All right, quick. You don't have to think too long and hard on it. It's just 10 facts. to drive. We're going to get very deep on this. Be an eye opener for a lot of you guys. You talk about where you mm -hmm. live. Talk about how many kids you have. You can talk about being single or married. Just 10 facts. You can even talk about your bank account, anything you want. You know, you are, uh, you hit the bronze circle of excellence. You have a closing coming up, or you just did a closing. You, know, you could say this is your first year in real estate. You can say that you hate working with buyers. You could say that you love short sales. You could do whatever. Just anything that, 10 things about you, the truths, facts, things that you've already told yourself or things that you already have, things that already, you already uh, are part of your life. You know, I bench press 100 and God knows what pounds, what knows you guys want to get you know, for the tough guys in the room. You know, whatever it is where you want to put. And I'm going to need you to have the randomizer ready for us. We doing okay with the video and audio? Everything good? Okay, some of you guys may be ready, right? Yeah. Okay, good. So Joel, as soon as you're ready, you can just start doing a randomizer for us. <coughs> okay, okay Essa. Essa, did you lose your voice? Are you sick? You think so? <laughs> <laughs> if you can volunteer and just tell us um, some of the things on your list, maybe we'll go down a whole line. If you can start with the first one. Tell me the okay. first one. Um, I love to sing. You love to sing? Um, I am creative. 
You're creative. <clears throat> I am a boss ass woman. <laughs> You're a boss ass woman. Oh, I am a visionary. I am a great mom. I am five four. Um, I am black girl magic. I am a lover of love. I love to laugh, and I am a realtor. Okay, let's start with the first one. You love to sing. Yeah. Right. <coughs> How many people in this room know that Esther loves to sing? I do. One person. How come only one person knows that you love to sing? I never heard her sing, but she did tell me she loves to. Well, I'm not gonna ask you to sing today because your voice sounds like you've been singing all weekend. You probably went on tour with Beyonce or something. I but. wish. <laughs> So tell me, why don't more people in this room know that you know how to sing or love to sing? <clears throat> because it's not one of the things I introduce myself with. It's this mm -hmm. is business. Is it embarrassing for you? No. No, it's you 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 pride yourself in knowing how to sing or, yeah. or learning how to sing. I mean, when the situation is right, yeah. Huh? Oh, <laughs> the situation is right. Yeah. <laughs> how come you don't just belt out singing sometimes and you change the whole mood and nobody would ever say <laughs> you have any kind of face? What's your favorite song? Oh, I sing gospel. Gospel? Yeah. Okay. Another example. Which one is? Uh, oh, I don't know. It's like I'm like. I Amazing like, Grace. No. Okay. You know how to sing Amazing Grace. I right? do, but okay. I don't. I, I can't explain it. It's, okay. I don't just like like one song. I love various songs. So. Okay. And it's more so a mood of a song than the song itself. Uh -huh. So it's like the lyrics. What is it saying? What What's my mood for today? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I gauge. Um, what song is my favorite song? Okay. Um, throughout the day, so it kind of changes. I got you. Yeah. What if one day you just came in and you just start belting out a song for us in uh in the middle of uh, I will not prospect? do that. Why not? <laughs> what if everybody comes in and starts singing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. uh, you know. You don't think give that's me that? I will challenge myself. To you that should one because day. I feel like. I feel that with that, you might be unfulfilled with your achievements. I feel like you don't, uh, you're not priding it enough. I think it's a very, it's a super important trait to, for a person to know how to sing. I think not everybody is, can do that. I mean, everybody thinks they can sing good in the shower, but I'm pretty sure that you sing much better than anyone else here. But you should give yourself so much credit for being a good singer. Everybody here should know that you're a good singer. You can one day come into the office and just don't ask for permission. Just you see us, you know, just going about our business in the morning or something, just come in and start singing. You know, I feel like that would be a very good way to show yourself how uh, fulfilled you are with your, with your blessing, with your trait that you have that nobody else knows that you have. And that's something you should wear on your sleeve, definitely, is, is the fact that you could sing. Good. That was really good. I like that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Dolly stepped away. Let me see if I can pick someone else, unless she did already. Okay. Mike, what are oh you didn't do it, right? Did you do one? No? You wanna tell us ten facts about yourself? Like yeah, go ahead, let's start telling some facts. Um I'm a father, I'm a husband, mm -hmm. a video editor. Yes. I live in Woodbridge, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Um I make hip hop music. You make hip hop music, okay. And um graphic designer as well. Okay. Is hip hop music your passion? Is that your number one passion? I mean, besides my family. Oh, besides your family. Yeah, let's exclude your family for now. But as far as professional uh, work, would, would hip-hop be your number one thing? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Probably okay. right behind video editing. I really Got like. it. What has limited you to do that more for profit, your number one profit source? <laughs> Reality. Reality? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a great hobby. I love <coughs> putting words down on paper. Yeah. Um, I love expressing them vocally. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as the grind of putting the tour together, music is a tough business these days. Oh, it's, it's always um, been a tough every business. Every, everybody in around mm -hmm. is a musician somehow, mm -hmm. with the way technology is. Yeah. Um, but I enjoy doing it as a hobby and, and hanging out in those circles. Cool. And um, so I, you're okay? I, I have made money on it in the so past. So you're, yeah. you're okay with doing it as a hobby, or yeah, would you yeah. love it to be your main it was, source? I was making some money on it in my mid-20s, mm -hmm. and um, just a lot of work. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's no retirement plan with it, yeah. so it's kind of like you got to make your when own. It's over, it's over, and you know, there's there's no written age limit, but it, there's kind of like this, yeah, this the ceiling, yeah. I got you. Let's stop right there for a minute, right? <clears throat> there's a couple of things that um that Michael said that I I would love for Michael and for all of you to start realizing uh, that we do unconsciously a lot of times. You said there's a lot of competition in it. Number one, right? 
There's a lot of competition and everything. There was a competition for you to be born. I'm sure there were millions of little sperms that wanted to be Michael, but only one made it, right? Well, the, the competition is not what scares me. Okay. Um, but I would never do it as a living because there's everybody's doing it and it's watered down. So I'd rather be good in a more specialty area mm -hmm. and, and, and capitalize on that. Okay. Um, and that's why... Tell us about that. Uh, well, the, I became... I concentrated more on video editing. I've always been more on the tech side of things. Okay. So I've started becoming an editor and cool. valuing that is my one of my skills okay good so you didn't do you didn't choose uh, the life you have now because uh, hip-hop was too difficult or too challenging or there's too many people doing it no I just so let's not with the ebb and the flow the f I went with yeah. the flow and um, you know the career in video was a career to me the cool. other's always been a hobby and a pa uh, just a cool. passion um, a great hobby to, to feel positive you know I, I write yeah. a lot about my emotions and yeah. my goal is always to make to try to put into words what other people may not be able to put sure. into words. As long as you can live your life knowing that you chose video editing because it was your conscious choice, not because you felt that hip hop had too much competition, too many people, too many whatever. Like because those, believe it or not, and I don't want to put you on a spot. I'm not trying to mm -hmm. say anything bad about you, uh, because myself, I'm, I, I've done the same thing, and I'll, I'll explain to you in a minute. Because uh, sometimes what we do is we tell ourselves that story. And we believe that story. So then we never have that hip hop career because we told ourselves it was too difficult, too many people, too much traveling, whatever the case may be. And then we start to just believe it and we are, we're okay with settling because we told ourselves that story. But the fact that you're telling me that you love, um, uh, it's more practical for you as a video editing and you love it just as much, then that's good. But you still have not given up your dream of hip hop because you still tour, you still I do still, it. For yeah, fun. I still go around. Um, I'm actually going to Maryland next month. Nice. Um, uh, upstate New York next month so uh -huh. I, I still keep it through I, but yeah. I'm not trying to you know yeah pay for my daughter's daycare with it you know <laughs> it'd be a little hard she, right now yeah she might be uh, yeah not I don't know where she'd be if, uh, if I, <laughs> she'd probably be touring with you yeah <laughs> living in the back of a van yeah I just picked my gig wheel okay so um, what I'm trying to get at guys is that <clears throat> I'm not trying to put anyone in a spot or make anyone feel bad about their decisions in life but we gotta watch what we say to ourselves because we start to condition ourselves and uh, by Mike saying that he was, uh, it was too difficult, the rap business or the hip hop business is too difficult. You know, yeah, everything is difficult, guys. We mean the real estate industry is difficult. Editing is difficult. The dude, you're, you're such a good editor. Well, I'll tell you what, mm -hmm. when I was making money on it, yeah, um, I noticed the more I put myself out there, the better I was doing. Yeah. You know, so I knew that, that, that I did get that feeling. The and, principles, yeah. And I was getting to that point where, you know. I can make two grand in a night just mm -hmm. performing for 20 minutes. Sure. So it was like, wow, this is great. Mm -hmm. Where do I but go But then from it's here? like the lifestyle of a musician. It's like it's not. It was. It's important. not. You know. Yeah, it's not truly an adult lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, in, unless you are rich and famous from it. Yeah. You know, otherwise, you're grinding your different city every Music night. Music man. Um, some of my friends, you know, just go to Europe for two or three months. Mm -hmm and try to find shows and get paid and pay for their hotels every night just yeah. from the shows that they find. Yeah, so you, yeah. Love, you, love, the, you love the art, but yeah. you hate the industry. I would never make a career out of it. The industry is it. tough. Yeah. Good. Tough, the industry, on, uh, tough on the body. I the think. lifestyle is, is yeah. not for you, but the art is for you. Mm -hmm. I like it. You made a conscious decision. Yeah. It was you. Definitely. Good. That's awesome. Um, Derek? Uh, you, can, yes, we can volunteer, Derek. Come on. Yeah, tell him. Um, so I put... I like to play soccer. I'm 21 years old. I love to learn about business and investing. I have a Shih Tzu. I live in Kenilworth. I love to travel. I have a Honda. I love music. I love to learn new things, and I'm terrified of regret, like something that I should have done. I'm terrified of regret and things you should have done. That's yeah. awesome. That's really good. We could share it with you. <laughs> yeah, you're hiding, bro. Move yeah. over to Tom. Sit in Tom. The sit next to Tom. Yeah, the, the Tom. Uh, the column is just saying a whole bunch of things. All right, give him the mic back so he can um, uh, expand on some of these things. Okay, so uh, your soccer player, you said, let's start over a little bit more so that way people can see you. So you said you're a soccer player, right? Go over again. 21 years old. Uh, I like to learn about business and investing. I have a Shih Tzu. I live in Kenilworth. I love to travel. I have a Honda. I, I love music. I love to learn new things, and I'm terrified of regret as in like something I should have done. Okay, good. Tell me about traveling. Where have you traveled to? I've been to Portugal multiple times. I've been to Canada. I've been to Puerto Rico. I've been to Miami, Maryland. Um, that's really it. But I where's, want to do more. Where's one place that you've always dreamt of going to? Ooh, Bora Bora. 
Bora Bora? Just from pictures. Okay. <laughs> Why haven't you gotten a Bora Bora yet? Because the tickets are like super expensive so you yeah. so you've trained your mind to think that you don't have the money to go to Bora Bora basically yeah okay so that's a story we tell ourselves guys um, uh, Derek is a great example of what sometimes we uh, achieve and aspire to have but we don't because we tell ourselves that we don't deserve it or we don't have enough money for it or we don't really or we don't really uh, it's not part of our lifestyle it's not something we can have so first thing I want you to do Derek is uh, write this stuff down I want you to find out how much a round-trip ticket to Bora Bora is Yeah, I want you to find out what a round trip ticket to Bora Bora is. Then I want you to find either a hostel or an Airbnb for the time that you're there. Uh, a what? A hostel? I thought you said a hospital. No, you might need that. <laughs> you might need that. You, you might need that if you drink the water, but no, hopefully not. Yeah, find a hostel or find an Airbnb, something within, uh, you know, nothing that's too crazy. That way you can have uh, spend more money on, on, on maybe expenses hanging out. And then give yourself a budget of how much money you'd want to have on hand for the time that you're there. All right. Now tally all that money up, figure out what that number is. So now your brain can register what it is that it really costs to stop you from fulfilling your dreams. So if that number ends up being $3,000, is $3,000 a number, Derek, that you think is outside of your reach? No. Is that a number that you've seen before in your life? Yeah. So why don't you travel more? You have no kids. You don't have a family of your own, right? You don't have that yet. You have, <laughs> you have a boss that will let you pursue your vacations whenever you'd like. And, dude, you're young and you're right now, like, dude, I mean, you're at the prime of your life. Don't wait. Don't, don't make your dreams wait for later in life, dude. Don't postpone happiness for retirement. Don't postpone happiness. Just go, bro. I mean, if you've got a credit card, if you've got a credit card... <laughs> I've done that before yeah. multiple times. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I'm going to give you some time. I'm not saying you're going to do it today, tomorrow, next week, or anything like that. But I want you, within the next six months, to come to me and say, I scheduled a trip to Bora Bora. Damn. I want you to put okay. reminders on your, on, your, on your calendar that three months left, two months left, one month left before my time is up, I have to go to Bora Bora. If you're not doing it for me, don't do it for me. Don't, don't do it to make me look good. Like I, 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 I encourage someone to do it. Do it because you want it and you deserve it. And you've always, you know, you want to be a traveler, right? You want to see the world. You don't, you don't have to be as crazy as, as Alejandro who backpacked it through around the world. That sounds really cool. That's that something I've cool. thought of doing a lot, actually. But While that's you're in Bora Bora, maybe you come up with that idea. Yes, Alejandro, give him the mic. I was postponing it when I was like very young. I just keep postponing because oh, I don't know the language, so, you know I don't I don't know what I was gonna happen and this and that. And then one day I went with my friend to Brazil. That was the first one, and then uh, I just keep going to different countries, man. Yeah. And you find a way, bro. You will find it. Yeah, you find a way. If anything, you just get a job there while you're there. <laughs> when we went to on the way back from 10x, I actually met a guy on the plane who he spent three years traveling. He went to, he was showing me his passport. He was showing me his passport. He went to 55 countries. He's been to 40 states in three years. Yeah. And he, he basically, he didn't like go with no money at all. But when he started running low on money, he would get like little jobs from place to place. Yeah. And he kind of lived like that for three years. Yeah. And that, yeah. to me, that's that sounds amazing, but that's definitely terrifying at the same time. Like, yeah. I don't know. But. It is. It is terrifying. Um, I'm going to backtrack a little bit, and Mike, I'm going to go back onto the point where, where I was with you, and I'm going to incorporate what Derek is saying. There was a point in my life when I had two options. I had an option to either go to Full Sail Academy, which is the number one school in the country for visual arts, uh, recording, music, all that stuff, right? 30 grand a year. It was not cheap. I had the option to go there. Or I had the option to open up my own barbershop. And I told myself, I'm not going to take the risk and go to the full sale because I take care of my parents. And that's a story that I told myself for the reason not to pursue my dreams, not to go to this academy that would have probably taken me to a different, a different step, a different road in my life for sure. We may not be here today if I did go that route. But I always told myself that I postponed that and I didn't do it because I have to take care of my parents. My parents are... 3,000 miles, 4,000 miles away from me now. 
and I take care of them just fine from here. So I told myself that story and I never accomplished, I never did what I wanted to do. And fast forward to today, I'm doing these things little by little, I'm incorporating them, all this video and this audio and all this stuff you see now is stems from back then because I wanted to get into recording and all those things. And I didn't, I, told, I sold myself on not doing it. I would have had to relocate to Florida, which is what I wanted to do anyway, you know, obviously. Uh, and I just, uh, I, I postponed happiness way too long. And now I'm in a position where I probably couldn't do that, go to school for a year. You guys probably wouldn't be here, <laughs> you know? So it, was, it would definitely was something that I want to encourage you guys. If you're in a position to do something that you want to do, just do it. Do it. Don't let anybody stop you. Don't let your mind get in the way of saying you can't do something. So uh, that's why I wanted to tie in with you because I've been there before too. And I know I had my passion and I, let me think with my rational brain, you know, and that's what we do sometimes. And we don't know what could be around the corner for us. But the music industry is really difficult. I heard it plenty of times. And that was one of the reasons why I didn't go. Because my friend told me, oh, everybody in the industry is gay. Everybody in the industry is Illuminati. Oh, this, this is that. And this, you know, he's, he's shaking his head because he knows. He's heard the same things. So you got to be careful, guys. I mean, it's just what you feed yourself and that, or you feed your mind. That's what happens. And Derek, man, you have, a, you, have a, you have a goal now, bro. You have a mission. Bora Bora, man. Sounds exciting. Don't forget to send us pictures. It's going to be cool. Where is Bora Bora? Is that in Europe somewhere? I have no idea. It's in Asia. Huh? It's Asia? Asia? It's a, Asia. part of Asia, right? Pacific Island? I have no idea. I, I just it's seen it. On the Indian Ocean. On the Indian Ocean? I think. It's gorgeous, man. I've seen pictures. It really looks nice. It really, really is. I've uh, seen pictures and I've heard that in like 20 years. It's supposedly underwater. So. Yeah, the Maldives as well. Yeah. Crazy. Joel, can we have uh, another randomizer? One randomizer? Did you, are you sure your name is in there too? <coughs> no, hers is probably not. Oh, by the way, I picked you while you were while you were away. I picked your name out of there. Bridget, do you want to tell us your top your your ten um, your your ten facts about yourself? All right, ten facts. I'm a mom. I have brown hair. I have an unhealthy obsession with shoes. <laughs> I'm happily married. <coughs> I love real estate and being here. I live in, lived in Kenilworth for twelve years. Uh, I'm addicted to Sprite, which is why I can't lose weight. I am determined to succeed. I have three brothers that spoil me, and I love the season fall. You love fall. Okay, nice. Uh, hold on to it for just a second. So let me ask you, why do you think you have an unhealthy obsession with shoes? Because I um, have way more than I need. Your husband should be here telling us this probably. Say it again? Your, your husband should be here telling us this probably. Yes, he would <laughs> if he were here for sure. You have more than you need. You have more than you have more than two shoes, right? One for each foot. So right. That's way too much. I have already. way more than I need, <laughs> but I share with other people. That's nice. So it makes me feel a little less. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. At any point in your life, were you uh, ever teased about the shoes you wore as a yeah. kid? Yeah. I wore? had nothing growing up. I had nothing growing up either. I used to wear ponies and Olympians. I don't know if you guys remember those in the eighties. Any eighties kids? I don't know. Yep. Like, yeah. So, ponies, Olympians, anything you could find from Payless or wherever Bradley's back then. I the had shoe too. store? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the moment my dad bought me my first pair of Jordans, dude, I, I wore those Jordans every single day. It was just like the, the, I still, like if I could find those shoes, I'd still buy them. Even though they're like $300, they're crazy now how much I'm going for those Jordans. Right. But your obsession with shoes stems from a point in your life when you didn't have enough resources to get yourself nice shoes or keep mm -hmm. up with other girls. So what we tell ourselves so sometimes is we allow these people to have control over us even 20 30 years later whenever it was that that happened to you mm -hmm. we still allow those people who teased us as children to have that control over us and don't get me wrong if you're into shoes and that's your thing and you like it because it makes you happy and you love the way you look that's awesome but as long as you can know in your mind that you're not doing it because these people impose that on you as a child right. because if that was the case i'd still be buying 300 dollars jordans to this day i've come to terms that what i wear put it this way like a, like there's a saying that says um uh what is it um, clothes don't make the man a man makes the clothes mm -hmm. right because what happens is if the man is someone who's outstanding the woman is someone who's outstanding you could be wearing a dress from target and you make that dress look good right you know you make everything look good so it's a, a lot of times it's in our mind and it's okay to give us give ourselves some treats once in a while now i buy myself a nice suit once in a while or a nice pair of shoes because you pay for quality sometimes you know it's going to last but if you feel it's teetering on the point of unhealthy 
then you may want to think to yourself, why am I really doing this? What is it that's controlling my thoughts and my actions? Right. And you might still have someone from the past who has that control over you, and you got to let that person go or those people go. So, All right. Thank you for sharing, Bridget. I appreciate You're you. Welcome. Jen, you want to do one? Um, so I did my first closing in three months uh, for being a new agent. I am an awesome and an amazing mother. I am very creative. I love to cook. I love my job. I am a sneaker and shoe fanatic as well. <laughs> I'm very personable. I love to be challenged. It drives me. Very big into music. Very eclectic. I have over 60,000 songs in my laptop. Nice. And I do computer graphic design, and I've had my cosmetology license for the last 19 years. Nice, nice, nice. So quick question for you. You just had your first closing, correct? Yes. How long have you wanted to be a real estate agent for? <sighs> I want to say back in 2014 when I, when I was the property manager. When you were the property manager. Mm -hmm. And uh, why, weren't you, uh, why didn't you go and take the steps to become an agent back then? Uh, well, I was, and then I became pregnant, and then I was like not passing the test because... Uh, it was a rough pregnancy, I'll just say that. Okay. Between my injuries and the pregnancy, it was rough. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I didn't stop. I kept going. Mm -hmm. Even though I went to three schools and paid three separate times, I was de determined to get my license because I know I was I was meant for this business. At any point, did anyone tell you stop? Or is absolutely, right? absolutely. Did you let them, did you let absolutely. them get Absolutely. They're head? like, Jen, what are you doing? You're so stupid. You can't pass this test. Like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, it's a totally different language. Like, uh, I'm not used to talking real estate language. Yeah. So I had to reprogram uh, my train of thinking and the way I thought before. It just... I just did some wiring. Yeah, but, but I, let's be honest. There were times when these people got into your head, right? Absolutely. And there were times when you put it on pause and put it on hold? Uh, yeah, in a yeah. sense. Yeah, and having the baby was just one of the things, right? That lit the fire under my ass. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Well, listen, uh, you, thank God that you got over that rut. But it could have been easily went the other direction for you, right? could have easily said, you know what? These people are right. I have my cosmetology license. I mm -hmm. can just go and do hair. I can make 70 grand making doing hair. I'll just go do that. That's a good living. Yep. You know, but you would have been cutting yourself short. Exactly. Right? Fulfilling your dreams. I knew my worth and yeah. I knew when I was at the property. Um, and even though it was with, you know, apartments already all set up and I already had the location in a sense, um, I love the joy in helping the pr prospect then turn into my tenant and then building that relationship, you know, from there. Yeah. So, yeah. I hear you. Good. As long as the things that happened to you back then and have a positive effect on you now, it's okay. It's all right for them to happen to you. Absolutely. You just got to stop letting those people have any power in our mind whatsoever. Exactly. There was a, They're there, non-factors yeah, now in my there, life. There was a lady who uh, was my teacher, and I'll never forget her. I know her. I still know her name. She was my fourth grade teacher. Her name was Mrs. Tiberci. And she made fun of me because uh, she called me stupid in front of class because I didn't read the book, and I had to give her a book report up in front of class. And that created... Uh, me to have social anxiety when I would speak in public, but I wanted to still be, not be known as stupid, so I did my work, I became a good student, but I always had this anxiety where I couldn't talk in front of people because I felt like I was never prepared and mm -hmm. I was going to be called stupid. So um, I got over that because I thought back to that lady who had this control over me and this preconception about how I, I'm going to sound to other people. So I, I stopped letting her have power over me and I started to uh, I started to grow the things that I was interested in, which one of them was, you know, being in front of people and leading and teaching and educating. So I think I've done pretty well since then, but I had, you, you can't ever do that until you stop letting these people have control and power over exactly. your life. Exactly. Yeah, so thank you for sharing. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. We'll do uh, maybe one or two more. That says Joali. Joali. You sure it's Mr. Joali? Hmm? James Tharp. Can you pass up the mic to Jen? Oh, Jen. Oh, I'm sorry. Jen is going to... Uh, Jen has the mic. I'm sorry. Jen, go for it. Can you go for it, Jen? I'm sorry. I didn't. I lost that. I lost track. What do you have, babe? So, I love to smile. I enjoy learning new things. I like meeting new people. I love my family. They're the world to me. Mm -hmm. I don't give up until I get what I want. I fight for what I believe. I'm a hard worker. I wear my heart on my sleeve. I enjoy new adventures, and I'm a competitor. I love challenges. Okay. Uh, what kind of adventures are you into? Tell me, example. Just trying new things. Yeah. Honestly. Is there something that's on your bucket list that you're prolonging? Like that? <laughs> you skydiving, rock climbing. 
I've scuba thought diving. about skydiving, and that's something I always did want to do, but okay. I'm not going to lie. I'm really scared to do it, considering I am afraid of heights. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to resonate with you a lot on that one, because I'm terrified of it, but mm -hmm. it, it is I'm one of those things that I know I have to do. Cause one day, only, one day. The, but I just... the only thing that has control over me is my fear oh my, of falling. Oh, girl. I told my husband, let's do it together. He's like, you want both of us to die? Who's the kids going to stay with? <laughs> That's the story we tell ourselves, we're going to die, right? Yeah, and honestly, I just saw a video over the weekend where somebody literally skydived and he didn't make it. So I don't know. <laughs> what? I Wait, really that, don't know. Is it on YouTube? <laughs> no, somebody had posted it on Instagram. It was like, it was. I guess it was the instructor that was helping him. And then he went to pull it and I guess it didn't open. It opened when he was already down in the dirt and the rocks. <laughs> Like, I swear, I could pull it up and show it to you, but I was like, yeah, about yeah. that. I have no idea. I have no idea. I think it was a repost. Okay, okay. I, I'm, sure there's, I'm sure there's videos online <laughs> where somebody's getting hit by a bus too, right? I don't know. I, don't, I try not to search that. It doesn't, it doesn't mean we're never going to cross the street again, right? It doesn't mean we're not no, going to go anywhere. No, but I don't know if I could do it just yet. Huh? Honestly, I don't think I could go skydiving. What sky would you have to do to get yourself in a mindset to say, okay, skydiving is, I'm ready for it? I'm not going to let skydiving have any control over me. Listen, I better have like a you can't huge be drunk. suit they don't on. You to be drunk. I better be, yeah, they extremely can't let you, they, they let you be in drunk. space somewhere. Okay, numb <laughs> to everything. <laughs> because oh my God. I don't know. Heights scare me. Yeah, but you know what it is? I'm going to tell you guys right now. She's created a story, and I had the same story created, that something's going to happen to you. And let's just take that skydiving and apply it to the rest of our life. I'm sure there's other things in life that you've created a story around that have stopped you from doing it. Even, you, even though you know, chances are you probably have a better chance of getting hurt in a different manner mm -hmm. than you do by skydiving, right? But it's something that is on your bucket list and you keep prolonging it because you've created this scenario that happened to maybe one person in the last year or two and we think it's going to happen to us. So uh, if you ever do uh, have the opportunity to go skydiving, just think in your mind before you make a decision. Am I letting my story get the best of me? Have I created a story that doesn't really exist? Is it something that, fear is basically that. Fear is something that doesn't exist that we perceive as being real. And at the end of the day, that's really what's happening to you is you're allowing your stories to get the best of you. So if that's one of the things you, you wanna do to call yourself an adventurer, I would say give yourself a deadline. You know, I think just like anyone else and say, look, I'm gonna do it by this date. And just try to not focus on those videos that you see. And maybe on the good videos, the, 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 the tutorials. How about the in another 30 years when it's like, you know, I'm going to die sooner or later anyway. <laughs> and if I die, I lived a good life. I had a good run. <laughs> Make it part of that bucket list. Yeah. <laughs> the guy right next to you, Max, have you skydived? Uh, no? I, I had huge falls. I mean, rock climbing. Oh, so you uh, skydived on, on the cliff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's afraid of heights, but he goes rock climbing. I, I, I always wanted to. It's just not enough time. Has I mean, anyone I, ever skydived in this room? Anybody? I would love to, but nobody ever wants to go with me. Uh, I, I I'll try to find someone for you. <laughs> hey, you got someone behind you. you. Got someone right there. Damn, we got a. That just gave me another reason not to. We got an office full of wusses. Nobody wants to skydive. <laughs> Jim, what do you got? I, I love to play drums. I lived in Greenbrook my whole life. I grew up in a house I'm in. I've been clean and sober 28 years. I've been a carpenter on, well, on and off when I'm not doing music. I was a carpenter since I was 20. Been with my wife 23 years, married this October, be 20 years. Got two great kids. I love watching my son play football and wrestling. I love music, I love God, and uh, I miss my mother and father. Nice, bro, that's, yeah. a, that's a nice one. Uh, okay, so you've mentioned two professions in there, uh, a drummer and a carpenter. Uh, was that your dream growing up to be a drummer or a oh, carpenter? Not the carpenter. Not the carpenter one. Right? You, you kind of, uh, you kind of felt with your practical brain at that point, right? What stopped you from pursuing your real dream? What was your dream? Was it to be a drummer or something else? It was else? music. I was music? doing music. Well, still music for most. Of all, but I still play drums, stuff. Mm -hmm. but what stopped me was the clean and sober part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, like he said, music. The industry's rough. I mean, it was, I had problems. And, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean. Uh, when I got clean and sober, I, I walked away for a while from the music. You had to you get know, a different circle of friends, right? Yeah, new new friends, and you know, I just had to get away because it was 
going there was taking me other places. You know, and Absolutely. I didn't want to be there. I mean, I gave up a good. I was we were doing good. I was with a good band. Mm -hmm. We were doing very good. But I, I had to give that up. Yeah. You know to be alive today I guess no really. absolutely yeah so that, that's the you know, the carpentry just came as when I wasn't doing music and it you know became a career for a while sure uh, did you ever think to yourself well maybe this band in particular is not the right band for me maybe I should look into a different genre a different you know maybe a different band altogether maybe Christian rock maybe something else well actually over the years you know what uh, music is a chemistry when you get a right group it's a, it's a chemistry yeah you know and the one I was with before I got clean and sober I felt bad because my drug addiction really was hurting that band at the time. Were you the only yeah. one? Well, they were that. I was, I was myself. I knew I was in bad shape. You yeah. know, uh, actually, that guy just I, I always thought maybe we'd get back together after a while. You know, years later. Were those guys reunion, clean? But he just actually he just passed away. Oh, okay. But I hadn't seen him in twenty eight years. Mm -hmm. And while I was sober, I've been in other bands with uh, musicians that are sober. That's awesome. And a couple had good chemistry, and another one that. The guy passed away after a while, you know. Mm -hmm. and the ki the chemistry's got to be there. I hear you. Yeah, you know, I still play. I actually play with my church uh, mm -hmm. band once a month. We play at the church, so. But hey, if the opportunity came, I would take it. But I got a family now. The road, <laughs> the road is rough. Um, no, it is. I'll Absolutely. be fifty six so. now. <laughs> yeah, I remember you wanted to be a real estate agent a long time ago too. Yeah, well, because, mm -hmm. well, in construction, one of my partners I partnered up with in two thousand twelve. Mm -hmm. He was a real real estate agent builder. So I learned a lot of him, and he used to, he was telling me for a long time that I should get my license. And you stopped yourself for a reason, right? Well, because I was trying to grow that business mm -hmm. at the time. You didn't and, I, and, there was, and actually, because of my my past with the the drugs and stuff, I got charges. I didn't think I could get a real estate license. That was the story you told yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You doubted yourself. You cut yourself off at the knees before you tried. Yeah, because I, I thought with my convictions, I wouldn't mm -hmm. I wouldn't get the license. Imagine if you would have tried back then. Gym of today would be in a different. Oh, well, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I would Absolutely, have you would have rode the whole wave up. That would have been good. Yep. But you know what? That's what happens. Sometimes we lose precious years of our lives because we tell ourselves these these stories, and uh, I don't even think they questioned you when you got your license, or did I have to write a letter? I, you didn't write, but I wrote a letter. You but wrote I a letter. Think, I'm not sure if it would have. Uh, I did write a letter, but I'm not sure if it came. You know, I'm I know, no, it came up with Uber. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. With um, with the real estate industry, they care more about violent crimes. Like if you're like a spouse yeah. abuser, if you've gotten into like uh, alter altercations with with other people, they care more about that than if you've had like a drug and alcohol problem, things like that. Because I mean, it's more forgiving, you know. The fact yeah. That we all you know deserve a second chance. But if you're like a lifelong felon, then you might not. Might it's not funny because I just wrote a letter to Uber. I was trying to get the Uber license in the meantime yeah. so I could make money. Mm -hmm. Last year I got turned down by Lyft, and that's another one. Okay, I just. Yeah. I just assumed Uber's going to be the same. Yeah. They actually gave me a chance to write, oh, what'd oh, you good. do for your Uber thing? I'm thinking, oh, great. Maybe I'll be able to become an Uber driver. Mm -hmm. Didn't work, but I'm thinking like, wow, I got my license. I had two businesses. I was licensed with the state for construction. Mm -hmm. I worked um, within the union. I worked with, I got a Twit card for the airport. Yeah. If you had to go there, I'm thinking like, wow. <laughs> That's crazy. But, <laughs> but Uber went. <laughs> oh, Uber went. Yeah. Uh, okay, but. Hey, listen, you keep pursuing, you keep persistence. You know that's key. You never know who might get on the phone if you can call over there. Yeah, but yeah. I'm here now. I'm doing yeah. this. And the, yeah, yeah this is a blessing. Yeah. Believe me. Okay. Uh, next one, uh, Joey. Go. No, I mean you. <laughs> I don't think your name is in there. If you're, I'm gonna look in that. I'm gonna look in that. If your name is out there, we're gonna make you go. We're gonna make you stand up here. And go. Huh? James' daughter? No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, one. Happy, optimistic, wealthy, intelligent, warm, considerate of others, single, love family, life, love fishing, and like to talk a lot. Okay, James, I'm going to get a little personal on you. The single thing, by choice? Uh, no, my wife passed away three years ago. Your wife passed away, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Have um, you, uh, have you, this is a, I mean, uh, you don't have to answer if you don't want to, but have you thought about, do you want to continue being single uh, for the rest of your life? No, of course Are you not. dating? Or what are you thinking yeah, for yourself? Yeah, I'm trying to dates, yes. You're looking for dates? Mm -hmm. uh, you got big shoes to fill, I'm sure, right? Yes. All right, how come you haven't found, uh, do you have a girlfriend? No, not right okay. now. Why do you think that is? Well, again, I had a couple of opportunities and um, 
if they just sit and mess. They're all crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, they, they're crazy, right? <laughs> you know, uh, later, <laughs> right? <laughs> later on in life, um, you have different standards, mm -hmm. you know, that you, uh, you want to fill. And, um, you know, went through a mourning process and just trying to resolve going through that mourning process and yeah. continue to move on as well. Sure. I have uh, eight children, so they keep me very Yikes. occupied. They have to keep me very occupied. They're not looking for candidates for you? I'm yeah. sure they are, right? <laughs> no, yes. they're not the road. Yes, they are. And, yeah, I've been down that road, too. I got you. But uh, they're all adults. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have adult children. You know, you become a real part of their life as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Have you ever um, stepped into a relationship with someone new already with the mindset that this person, this, this is not going to work out for me? No, I always look forward to work out. Yeah. Just things, things just happen. Some people are controlling mm -hmm. uh, and they're setting their ways and... You have to decide whether you want to live with that for the rest of your life because yeah. you can be negotiating in relationships or compromising, I should say. Absolutely. But you got to decide if you want to do that for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And some people are just on different uh, levels. You can have a great conversation on paper. Everything looks fine. But, uh, it, it, you know, once you really get involved in knowing a person because you don't want to be married to someone and five years later regretting it. Mm -mm. Not Absolutely this point not. In life. Yes. You definitely have to make sure that you're picking the right person. Do you find yourself being way too cautious where you don't want to give anyone enough chance to develop? No, 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 no. no. That's good. That's good. But you, you know, you question sometimes, you know, because it's been a while, you question sometimes, but yeah. uh, I don't think so. But you're much wiser now, right? Yes, yes. You've lived a long life and you know yes. that, you yes. know, relationships are definitely, like you said, a compromise and right. there's nobody that's perfect. Right. So let's, 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 let's uh, get that out of the way. Well, e even with, you know, you meet someone who never had children, then. Mm -hmm. You know, they they will be hard for them to understand your commitment to your children. Yeah. You know what I mean. So you you it's like okay, I tried that, and it didn't work, and yeah. for you know various reasons. Yeah, because you're you're one shot of a baseball team. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. But um, so Exci excited about that. I have uh, two daughters that's attorneys. Mm -hmm. uh, one son who's a professor. One who's a hairstyle. A daughter who's a hairstylist. One is correction officer. Mm -hmm. One is in college. Um, so they're doing pretty well, so I'm really happy with that. That's awesome. That's yes. good. Uh, do you think that any of the things we spoke about today are signs to look out for when dating now? Are there things that people may say, the way they may conduct themselves, where now you might think to yourself, wow, this person has a victim mentality. Instead, maybe you're looking for somebody who has that positivity mentality, who has someone that can propel you. And be yeah, I'm looking for uh, someone, someone to, to grow with. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Um, you, I mentioned there was a couple of things that I wanted to mention about, but uh, renting space in your in your in your in your mind, you yep. know, not negative things, um, you can allow to rent space in your mind. I went through a meditation this morning. Yes. We have a Monday morning, um, um, Monday morning um, mastermind, yes. and one was about hate. You know what I mean? To get rid of all the hate, and you'd be surprised. When I was going through it. You know, sometimes your mind drifts, and you're like, "Who do I hate?" But then they start mentioning people. You know. Uh, you may have made something, hate something that your parents did. You may have hated a spouse, and you have to let that stuff go because it's really, you know, dwelling, you know, uh, eating you up. Okay. But to answer your question, um, is there something up there that uh, uh, rejection, uh, rejection become personal? Uh, sometimes uh, that can affect a, a relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, when you don't mess with someone, you're thinking, okay, I'm not, I'm not right for this person. I'm not right. Period. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes we, uh, like, you're you're in a dating scene. Sometimes you may find someone maybe you're into, but maybe they weren't feeling the same way. Right. And you start kind of feeling down about yourself, like, right. oh, my God, do I still got it? Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, I used to be a yeah, stud. Yeah, that, that was one was of the younger. biggest things when I started, yeah. yeah. But I'll tell you what, yeah. man, you look you look great. You have mm -hmm. a good energy about you, and mm -hmm. I think that uh, any woman that you find that you find right for you and suitable for you is a very lucky person. Thank you. Because you see you're doing all the right things, and you have eight great children to mm -hmm. back that up. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't raise a good uh, child or a good person if you're not a good person in yourself. You know, the, the fruit doesn't fall too far from the tree is the way that, that it's said. Thank so you. Very, very proud of that. Thank you, brother. Our guys are here. So we'll do one more. We'll give them time to. You don't have to worry about that, guys. You guys can just come and have a seat and join us. Yeah, worry about that later. Alejandro? Yeah, he's spoken before. I don't think there's a Joelle in there. I really don't think there is. Yeah, I think we need. I think we need a new. I think it's fixed. I think it's fixed. Alejandro, you want to go first? Alejandro.
Yeah, just give me uh, the 10 that you have there, the facts about yourself. I'm positive, I drive an Acura, I work out, I'm passionate, I'm a giver, I focus on the things that are important to me. I live in Elizabeth, I have a beautiful girlfriend, this is my second year in real estate. I love working with investors. Okay, uh, you can keep the mic. Yeah, um, so you love working with investors? Yes, I do. Okay, tell me why you don't like working with anyone else. I do actually work with buyers and, and listings as well. It's just investors is more like, uh, how do you call it? Uh, uh, it's less complicated. They're more analytical instead it, of emotional. It's like, go find me a property. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Long as, long as it makes sense, you don't have to, you know, uh, uh, make all these standards for a bar. Of course. Which I do, we no problem. I, I still do. Mm -hmm. you know, but, but if you had your choice, you would just work with investors, and if you had enough, I'll take anybody. I yeah. can, anybody I can help, yeah, I would you're, take. You're tough because you have such a good positive outlook. Yeah. You're, you have a great mentality and all those things. Uh, but what happens sometimes, guys, is we limit ourselves and we say, look, well, I'm only going to work with investors. I'm only going to work with sellers because we fabricate a story in our heads of one occurrence that happened to us. So there was a time when I said to myself, I'm never going to work with a buyer. I, I can't stand buyers. But the fact is that the buyers weren't broken. I was broken. My process of, of, of funneling the right buyers, I didn't have one. I always just work with anybody who would call me. So the thing is that nowadays I've come to the realization that if you ask the right questions, you can weed out bad buyers, you can weed out bad sellers, you can weed out bad investors. Because investors too, believe me, they're not all 100% well, awesome. There's some investors like, yeah, I'm an investor, show me a proof of funds. No, I don't want to. You know, or show me a proof of funds. Oh, yeah, I'm getting the money from my uncle. Or you know, uh, what kind of house you want? Oh, I want a two family for 100,000. You know, like the things that don't exist. I get so, those all the time. Yeah, I mean, look. Me too. I just yeah. push them away. So, but I keep, I keep, I'm keeping the information though. Yeah. Because maybe one, one day, I'm gonna yes. find something that may, you, know, you might educate them a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I got a, I got a lead over the weekend uh, that somebody, uh, a client that I sold the house to says, I, my sister in law wants to buy a house, uh, multifamily for investment. Uh, I'm like, okay, for how much? She's like, for forty thousand. I'm like, forty. I'm like, you mean four hundred thousand? She's like, oh no, 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 no. I'm sorry. And I, I could have said, okay, whatever, like, and blew it off. But she's like, no, 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 she's got $40,000 of the down payment. I was like, oh, okay, that's that's different. Maybe now we can probably get her you know, a hard money loan. Maybe get, maybe she can come up with a couple more dollars and maybe make it more more doable. But now we're talking about something that's more understandable. But if I would have just kind of like jumped the gun and said 40 grand, and okay, I'll get back to you. Like I would have I would have totally blew her off. So sometimes it's good for us to kind of dig a little bit deeper because they don't all speak our lingo. So Alejandro, what I was getting to you is that sometimes we only limit ourselves to working with investors because we've created a story about buyers or we've created a story about other people. But you have a very open mind. You're, you're, you know, you're a tough one to pick flaws in. Because guys, uh, you guys may not know Alejandro that well. I've come to know him more and more and more recently. And Alejandro has a, such a very optimistic outlook on life. Like really, really does. Like the fact that he traveled the world with a backpack, that you don't get more optimistic than that. Like, you know, <laughs> so many things can go wrong. You can get malaria, you can get robbed, you can get killed. You get so many things that can happen. But he developed his mind a lot while you were out there, right? You had a lot of time to think about what is important to you in your life. I'm sure you came up with a lot of great ideas while you're out there. You even have the goal to build a, um, a hospital, is it, or a school? For, it's a school. A school for children yeah, in Colombia. He's still working on that for a lot of people who don't know that. So I'm sure all these things stemmed from being alone and having time to meditate on your thoughts. Uh, so I'm really proud of, of um, the person you become. That you're, you're a really, really good role model and hard to find a lot of flaws to pick at. But if anybody wants to model someone's mentality, Alejandro is a good example of someone to, to talk to and be, be positive around because he always, even if he's having a bad day, like, you can't tell. You can never tell he's having a bad day. So I'm really proud to have you on, on Thank board. Thank you. Good. Uh, we need the mic up here now. Joelle came up on the randomizer. <laughs> We're not going to pick on you too bad. Australia, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. How come you haven't been to Australia? <laughs> Nobody could hear you. Why haven't you been to Australia? It's far. It's far? Mm -hmm. Well, just not now. Huh? You, would you prefer if Australia came to you? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be yeah. nice, right? <laughs> uh, so why you said just you just mumbled mumbled not now? Huh? 
Yeah. Well, you just mumbled something like not now. Yeah, it's working. We're, we're, of course not today, but I'm saying like where, where in your life does Australia fit? At what point in your life? What do you mean? At what point in your life do you see yourself going to Australia? Three years from now, three years from now. Three years from now? Mm -hmm. You don't have a set day, you don't have a set time. Mm -hmm. you, would you say that you weren't prepared for it now because you have to work? Because you said that a little while ago. Yeah, you I said just you don't want to go right now. <laughs> not today. No, I don't. I meant like this year. <laughs> okay. Why? Are you not going to be working in three years? Are you going to be retired? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a three You're giving me three years notice? notice? <laughs> <laughs> let, me put an, let me put an ad out right now. <laughs> Same thing goes to you that I said to Derek before is that uh, if you really do have something, write it down. You told me over the weekend a, a dream without a deadline is what? It's not that. What is it? A goal without a d deadline? Um, yeah, you told me yourself, so I'm going to use your own words against you. So let's put her on the spot. Said, a goal without a deadline is just a dream. A goal without a deadline is just a dream. You should have never said that, because yeah. look now. now no, you're gonna I'm not like Derek. I'm actually going to go. Oh, you're going to do it? Yes, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm I, not, I don't care about the money. <laughs> so you have a deadline? No, yeah. yeah? I want to go like, before I'm 30. Before you're 30? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, guys, look, she's making right now, she's making a commitment. She said before she's 30 years old, she's going to go to Australia. Okay, we're going to hold you to that because everybody in this room is going to still be here 30, uh, in, in three years. <laughs> before you're 30, that's way too long. That's five years, dude. Four years. That's four years. Yeah, yeah look, dude, that's way too long. <laughs> that's what I want. Very <laughs> postponing happiness for that long. Let me get married then. Or to Australia. Yeah, it's not too far. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, think you should, I think you should really think about that deadline. Uh, of when you want to go because it has nothing to do with money right you good no, it's just work i'm sure work will still be here probably even more by the time you get back <laughs> <laughs> give yourself a give yourself the deadline give yourself a deadline that's all i can tell you because you can't really know you'll never know what tomorrow brings guys you know so it's good to have these things all right that was a really good exercise the only thing i can tell you guys uh, uh going outside of here after this <laughs> is um catch yourself you're conscious now. You have no you have no excuse now because you have just been giving the what is it, the blue pill or the red pill? Which one that gives, makes you know the, the truth? I forget. Which one was it? Are they both the same? I don't I didn't pay attention to in that movie, I was falling asleep. It was one of those pills that you take and you get to see the reality, right? So now you know reality. Now you know the truth. You've been told the truth. Next time you catch somebody being one of these things, negative or being, you know, so draining or, or having control over your life, be conscious of it. Going forward, you're not going to have anyone have power over you. You're going to not tell yourself these stories, and you're going to start living in the present. So uh, now you guys uh, have this uh, training, formal training. Believe me, I didn't know about this stuff either. I thought it was normal for people to say, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I can't recover. I can't get on my feet because of something that happened three years ago. You know, it's BS. So now we know. Now we've uh, conditioned ourselves. Good. So I think we have our guys ready. Are you guys ready? Yeah? Come on, I'm going to introduce you guys. Hey. How are you? Good. Your name? Drew. Drew? Drew nice to meet you. Drew, nice to meet you. Badger? Is that your name? <laughs> Guys, this is, uh, uh, come if you can, over here. And Dean. Oh, we have a Dean too? Nice. Okay. Do you guys need uh, your laptops? Or a laptop? Or do you guys have a thumb drive? Oh, you going to do it like that? Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, we'll hand those out for you. We'll take care of those. What do you have? These? There you go, Tom. Thank you, brother. Thanks, man. This one too? Yeah. Okay. For us to have. Yeah, you can leave those out there next to that stuff. You guys can come right up here. Uh, today was, uh, are you a victim or a victor? Oh, nice. Yeah, we went through that. You guys can catch it later on. It'll be on Facebook Live. Uh, yeah, so, oh, you guys are going to be on Facebook Live. Cool, cool. Dean, it's a pleasure, brother. Thank you so much. Of course, of course. Good, good, good. Okay, Pastor, come. Who's going to be speaking? You? Dean? Oh, sure, sure. Come. Wherever you guys, whoever's going to be speaking, I'd like you guys to be right around here. You have to you'd be centered into the camera. Try not to have your back turned to it. Yeah. If you can, just hold on to this. That way we can, uh, on, a, on a Facebook Live, they can hear you. Yeah. Yes. You just put it here. Cool. Alright, just give us a second. We'll just pass these out.
I'm sorry? Oh, yeah, I'll get this out of here. Okay, guys, let me have your attention for a moment. We have today with us representatives from U.S. Bank. I've known Patrick for a very long time. Patrick and I used to be in the mortgage business together, and we did very well back then because obviously you can have a heartbeat, and you had a credit score, you had a loan, but things are much different now. So That's pretty true. Anyone who, <laughs> anyone who is in the business now and has survived this long, uh, they're definitely doing the right stuff. So I want you guys to give them your full attention. They're going to give us some training on, um, on their programs. So hopefully we can learn some stuff. So guys, please, this is Dean. And Good we have morning. Patrick and, and, and Drew. Drew. Oh, we're going to call you Andrew. Thanks. Okay, Drew. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good, good. So I thought we'd start out by talking about Game of Thrones. Any Game of Thrones fans? <laughs> wow. Was that incredible last night or what? There's only two episodes left. It's so hard to believe. Did you see that? That was like a major oops there, huh? I guess they had Starbucks back then. <laughs> Who knows? But if you haven't watched it, I'm, I'm the last person in the world to ever binge watch something. But uh, this past fall, one of my friends said, you have to do it. And it was literally to the point where it'd be 1230 at night. It was a work night. And I'm like, I got one more, you know, and I just stay up and do it. And it's, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. But I want to thank you all. Certainly, Luis, I want to thank you for having us here. Um, it's my pleasure. You know, basically what I'd like to do is just give you a little bit of a market update. As you can see, I like to keep things a little more fun than you know, probably a lot of other people that would stand here and tell you about the market. But um, right now, the market is doing really, really well. And, you know, I think for those of you that were, by a show of hands, uh, in business this time last year, who was selling homes this time last year? Okay, good. So if you were around last year, this was a really, really nervous time because there wasn't a lot of inventory coming onto the market. And then I've now in my 27th year of doing this and it was the strangest year i've ever had you know so this time of year there's usually a flood of inventory that comes on and then you know as the school year gets closer and closer things tend to tail off a little bit last year for the first time though all of a sudden in like july you know inventory started coming on and that was unusual very very unusual this year the signs are all very good and part of the reason is because interest rates have stayed down. And there's a reason for that. Part of the reason for that, because everything else in the economy was working against the interest rates staying down. How are you, sir? Good. So right now, who can, if you get this, I don't, I don't have something special here, but we'll definitely do something for you. We'll make sure we take you out to lunch. But who can guess why the economy right now why interest rates in particular are staying down when everything else says that they should be moving up. There's one thing behind it right now, and most people probably wouldn't be able to guess it. What's that? Trump. Mr. Trump, well, in, in part, maybe. <clears throat> Certainly the economy's doing really, really well, and it either started with President Obama and continued on, or whatever the, the root causes are, but right now the economy is doing really well. But if you recall, obviously the federal government was looking to increase the overnight you know, interest rate. Right. So, uh, and then he got out to a war of words with them and right now it's not moving. But why isn't it moving? I'll give you a clue. Investing, are you investing a lot of money into bonds, 10 year bonds? That's part of it. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons why interest rates move is the direct result of inflation. For those of you that don't know what inflation is, so if, if this book cost me a dollar, next year this book might cost me a dollar twenty-five or a dollar fifty. Think of this as a home. All right. So as inflation goes up, the ability for a customer to afford that same house at that same price goes down. Mm -hmm. Okay. So last year, as we were finishing up the year, the Federal Reserve wanted to increase the interest rates not because of inflation. It was the first time ever that they were actually looking to increase interest rates in advance of inflation, okay? But that inflation never came. Any idea why? So the answer is the internet, all right? So for a couple guys like you and I, so the internet right now is keeping inflation down because that's a free market. 
Luis, myself, many of you in the room, we could all sell the exact same thing. And because of that internet competition, we're able to keep cost down. So the cost of this book or this home is really not going up. Okay, so therefore today I can afford this book at the same price that it cost a year ago. Well, that's really good for all of us, right? Because we're all involved in the sale and transfer of homes. So right now, this gentleman right here could afford the exact same house this year that he could last year. And therefore now with people doing well, as you were saying with their investments, what is the greatest opportunity that stands in front of us today as far as you know, people buying and selling houses. Who's the greatest opportunity when it comes to selling homes? What generation? Baby boomers. Baby boomers, thank you. Now, who's the greatest opportunity when it comes to buying homes? Mm -hmm. I see some of you here. Right, millennials, right? So, for the last couple of years, though, a lot of reports came out, such as, you know, one by J.D. Power that said 71% of baby boomers said that they didn't intend to sell their home in the next 10 years which that was a staggering kind of a, a belly punch to folks that are in our industry, all right? Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, some of you may have some millennial age kids. Uh, I certainly have. fact and we don't want to tell some of our prospective buyers about this but New York and New Jersey rank as number one and two in terms of the most heavily taxed states and also rank number one and two uh, on a monthly basis with the amount of current residents moving out have you guys heard some of that stuff yep. that's being discussed 100%. we're being taxed pretty 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 severely you know for those of you that have been at home in a while in the same home for a while These two gentlemen over here. Um, but any questions, you know, from a, from a market standpoint or um, in general about interest rates and mortgages and real estate? Any questions? Are they going to stay low for a while? Yes. Yeah, I think for the rest of this year, there's really very little indication. Okay. Right now, what you have, and uh, not to get too incredibly technical, but similar to that same philosophy of the internet mm -hmm. being the reason why there's no inflation. Uh, in our world, there's something called margin compression. So in margin compression is when uh, everything tells you, including you know, uh, interest rate hikes by the Fed. So there was times last year where the Fed was increasing the interest rates by a quarter of a percent, mm -hmm. but the interest rates on the street never moved. So it was costing the bank more money to borrow the money, but the clients that were coming in to apply for a mortgage, they weren't seeing the increase in the interest rate. So that was actually compressing the margin. And what's happened in our business, the margin has been compressed so bad, so much, that you literally, it's very hard to make money in mortgage lending. It's very, very hard. So what you see and what you'll continue to see is a lot of uh, companies either going out of business, which are kind of your smaller mom and pop shops, or you'll see banks that are being uh, bought out by other banks, larger parent banks. To give you an idea, I just started with this company about a month and a half ago. 
Um, prior to this, I was an executive over at a company called TIAA. Tremendous company, trillion dollar company. Uh, they've been around for over 100 years and they got into mortgage lending. <laughs> The mortgage, the mortgage, com the, the margin compression thing, after just six years of being in business, pretty much scared them off, you know. So um, to give you an idea of our company, also you know, multi-billion-dollar company, we're the fifth largest bank in the country. Um, at TIA last year, we did about five billion dollars in business in lending. Last month, during the month of April, our company did four point two in one month. So it's a massive company, um, very, very strong, very good brand name um, in terms of you, when you think back to the financial crisis and the housing crisis, this was not a company that was caught up in that in any way. You know, and when we were bringing our folks over here, because I brought about 250 people to this company with us, I said, you know, the good thing about this company, unlike some of my competitors, and I'm not going to say names because I just too professional to do that, but Bank of America, Wells Fargo, those types of companies. Um, <laughs> I said, when you walk through the front door of a real estate office, you don't have to worry about somebody saying, oh, you're from U.S. Bank? You guys screwed me so bad. You don't have to worry about that because this is a company that primarily has been in the Midwest and the West, and now they're in the Northeast. Uh, the CEO of our mortgage division is uh, someone that for the past 20 plus years I've worked with or for and been friends with, so it was the reason why we came here, uh, and we're very happy to be here. Uh, this is a company that absolutely is going nowhere, um, but we also are very unique, okay, and the reason why we're, we're unique is the fact that this, let me ask you guys in this room, can you tell me where your closest U.S. bank branch is? No. Nope. There are none, right? So if you go in the Midwest, they're everywhere, but out here, they're not for now. We don't know. That might be changing. I've been hearing a lot of rumors about us buying some banks. But the reason is um, that, you know, right now with the advancements of technology, I don't have my phone, but oh, I do. I mean, you can pretty much do anything you want right here, right? So like Christmas time every year, I have checks laying all over my house. I have four kids. I'm a single dad. I have checks laying all over my house. I have no idea if they've cashed them or not. They're from their grandparents or whatever. And I say to, you know, my son or my daughter, did you cash this? Oh, yeah, I cashed it a week ago. Well, why, you know, why is it still here? I'm used to the day when you go to the bank branch. I'm not even sure my kids have even seen the inside of the bank branch, right? And when it costs you roughly a million dollars to build one bank branch, it's kind of a losing proposition. But you can certainly fit that into a strategy when you acquire, you know, a bank and have that local presence. But what makes us different, especially here in the Northeast, are the folks standing next to me here. I don't originate. Uh, the last time I originated a loan, you know, the dinosaurs were roaming the earth. But these guys here, they originate each and every day. But what's different about it is they are their own brand names, okay? So they are 100% professionals because if they're not out selling, if they don't have a book of business, if they don't have realtor contacts, if they don't have attorney contacts, if they don't give really good client service, they can't feed their families. They can't take care of themselves. So they basically have to, you know, eat what they go out and hunt, uh, so to speak. I don't want to say the, the other word on, on the camera here. But what's different about that, though, is when you have some of the other banks that you work with, their loan officers, and I'm going to tell you my 24-year-old son is uh, a loan officer, and he has bank branches, and, you know, he got involved in this industry right out of college. That's what you're going to get. He doesn't know a fraction of what these two know. He's learning, and he's learning really quickly, but it's different, right? So that's kind of like, for those of you that are into sports, that's maybe like college-level ball. You know, uh, this is pro-level. When you walk away from a feeder system that's going to give you, you know, leads and things of that nature, now you're on your own, you know? So the type of quality work that you do is just imperative because otherwise you'll never survive. So when you deal with a company that has loan officers such as ours, they are their own brand name. All right, they can get up and leave tomorrow morning, go start with a new company. It's not going to change anything, you know, other than their business card. So uh, the professionalism, the experience is certainly something, you know, that uh, they bring to the table. When I was doing a little bit of a review, you know, with Drew this morning before coming here, you know, we looked at your company online. There's 45 customer reviews for this group right here in this room, every single one of which rated you all outstanding. Right? That's the kind of word of mouth that you want out there. Um, because the other kind of word of mouth would certainly, you know, work against you very, very quickly. Yeah. 
Um, and you know that is you know credit to you and everybody in this in this room. And when I was looking at some of the mission statements and things about your culture, we share a lot of the same you know uh, important attributes. You know work ethic and making sure that you do things with integrity and, and certainly making sure that you're part of the community. I think yeah. um, I heard you were involved in basketball tournaments. We do, and stuff all, like we do so much for the, yeah, as much as we can. That's where you build your business. Yeah. That's absolutely where business, business is built. Business is built right now with your ties to the community. Business is built right now, whether you want to fight it or not, it's built on the internet. Um, one of the things we have at this company that's been an absolute pleasure and a surprise to me is something called Total Expert. So I want to make sure that as you keep in touch with Patrick and Drew, you know, after this day is over, you ask them about Total Expert. Total Expert is something for you to use for your clients. Uh, it gives you the most professional looking open house sheets. We can also advertise your listings on Facebook and other approved sites, which I think for us is Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, really some of the most professional looking, well built, uh, supporting advertisements that we can do for you. And guess what? It's free. It's absolutely free. And these days, it's pretty hard to find free advertising. Uh, free is certainly me, and I'm sure you guys feel the same way about that as well. Um, so any questions with any of that? I'd love to tell you more about Total Expert. Uh, I'll leave that up to these guys or, or any questions that you may have about that. But any other questions on some of the things that I've covered real quick? I have a question for you as far as what sure. you were saying in the beginning. Uh, do you feel that uh, inflation right now is uh, being controlled? Obviously, it's being mitigated right now by what you said, some external factors is the Internet. Do you feel like that's a direct result from all the money that was pumped into the system post-crash? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It is absolutely part of it. Um, the other part of it right now is you know, the overall health of the economy mm -hmm. on an international stage. Yeah. So one of the key things that's out there, I mean, this is kind of getting really deep, but for those of you that have heard uh, the term Brexit, yeah. so Brexit is right. where Britain is looking. It's funny because you see them on TV in Parliament, and when they fight, it's just so much funnier. You know, like when our politicians fight, you kind of sit there and you want to kill yourself. But <laughs> when, when their politicians fight with that accent, it's actually hilarious. But uh, Britain is threatening to pull out of the euro. So for folks that have money over there, they're looking for safe harbor for their investments. Right now, we're their safe harbor. So there's a lot of international money that's flowing into yeah. the U.S. exchanges, and that helps to keep you know our interest rates and our economy healthy because yeah. of that domestic, I'm sorry, because of that international investment. Mm -hmm. Very, very strong economy right now. Yeah. Um, so I think overall that's you know working with us and helping us. All of these things, you know, what, what people don't realize that are in this industry, this entire economy really boils down to one thing. And it's the same thing that made the economy crash back in 2008, 2009. What is it? Lending. Housing. Mm -hmm. Real estate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything is spent off of real estate, yeah, right? Do you need Home Depot if you don't have houses? Not really. Do you need his pool company? Do you need his landscaping company? Do you need her professional painting services? Mm -hmm. Do you need his roofing company? It's all based. It's all based on housing, right? And the one thing that they can't make more of is land. So you chose a really good profession, but you have to understand when the wind's blowing in a certain direction. How do you get out in front of it? You know, for for folks in your part of the industry, you know, especially out west where they're huge right now, that whole redfin movement. I mean, think about it. Think about the danger that that really brings to the table. You know, the cost of doing business on the cheap. You know, versus paying experts to help you with the single greatest investment you're probably ever going to make. All right? Everything's on the cheap now. Everything's disposable. Most of, you know, most people get rid of their cars after 30,000 miles. When I grew up, I mean, until the wheels fell off, you didn't get rid of it. <laughs> you know? The first car I bought, I could lift up my floor mat and I'd see the road going by. <laughs> you know? Exactly. You know? So everything's disposable. We've become a disposable society. You know, um, and that's why you have to stay out in front of it. If you really haven't made the internet and social media part of your business strategy, you're behind. You're behind, and you need to take classes. You need to figure that out. Sounds like you do a lot of training we down do. here about stuff like that. This morning's uh, title mm -hmm. was very intriguing when you were talking about it. But that's part of where they can help you, and we can help you, because we can help you with that for free. You know, and really help to work get you know uh, get your name out there in front of your clients, as well as show the houses that you're you're looking to sell and or buy as well. 
great question. Any other questions, you know, about some of the stuff we covered? Okay, fair enough. So, you know, again, I'd love to go through some of the other things that we have, um, what makes our company great despite all the products, because, you know, we focus on first-time home buyers. We have 3.5% down programs. Um, we have, you know, uh, float down options for a long-term weight lock where the customer can get, you know, potentially a better rate if the market's moved. You know, we have recast options where they can lower their payment after making, you know, or coming into some money. Um, tremendous portfolio products. But one of the key things that I find is the predictability. So if we have a really tough scenario, our salespeople can go with the scenario itself to the underwriter and get an outline from the underwriter as to whether or not the file would be approved, the type of conditions that we would need to prove, uh, whether it be income or anything else related to that customer's approvability, and ultimately deliver one thing to you, predictability, right? At the end of the day, you want to know that your loan is going to close. And we have a mission right now from our branding standpoint. We want, when our real estate agents hear that a customer is working with U.S. Bank, in our mind, we want you to know that's as good as paying cash. And that's what we're working towards, whether it be through our technology, whether it be through our advanced uh, portfolio-based products, but most importantly, through our sales force, you know, because they are better than most that's out there for the reasons that we talked about before. 50-state uh, lender, so if you have a customer that's buying in Arizona, which, by the way, did you guys know that Arizona is the fastest-growing retirement area in the United States right now? I think people are starting to get tired of Florida. Um, so now Arizona is booming. It's absolutely booming out there. Uh, the three fastest growing markets are the greater Scottsdale area, the greater Houston area, and for those of you that have been to a bachelorette party or a bachelor party in Nashville, Tennessee, which is one of my most favorite places to go. So those are the three markets right now that are absolutely booming as far as the real estate industry goes. Right. So, uh, so with that, any questions for me or stuff uh, that I haven't talked about that you'd like to hear a little bit more about? All right. Well, again, Lewis, thank you so much for having thank us you here. Guys. Appreciate it. I'll thank turn you. it over to we Drew. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. I think you. Uh, I think you said on point, right? On point was a great answer. I like that answer. So, so I'm Drew McKenzie. I'm a sales manager uh, with U.S. Bank in our new Chatham office. Patrick is on our team, and I get the uh, privilege of uh, bragging about a little bit about U.S. Bank. But first, I want to ask you. Uh, just to get a, a feel for the experience in the room, uh, how many realtors today in the room today have have sold more than for more than fifteen years? Anyone? Lou? I don't sell anymore, but I've been in the business. In the business, how, mm -hmm. how long? Sixteen years. Sixteen years. Okay. Uh, how about um, our newbie? Seems, uh, like, I don't, I don't seems like forever. Seems like forever. Yeah, seems like forever. How many years? Thirty-five. Thirty-five years. <laughs> How about our newest, our newest uh, salesperson here? Lou, I'll let you pick that. Newest? Um, yeah, how many, uh, how about you, Patty? I mean, when did you how get? How long have you been here, Patty? Uh, like a couple a weeks? Month? A month? Yeah, I think you won. I think she won. She just got a license. Patrick handed out a little. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through this just to, to to give you some highlights about U.S. Bank. Dean did a great job. Um, U.S. Bank, a national brand name, right? If you if you're looking at the TV nowadays, you're going to see more ads. You're going to see more sponsorships by U.S. Bank. Uh, for the fourth year in a row, we were voted the most ethical company in the world. That's uh, for the eleventh year in a row, we were voted the most trusted bank. So you can see the sense of integrity that U.S. Bank has, and that's one of the reasons the three of us joined here recently in the last uh, eight months. So U.S. Bank, it's, uh, it's been around 150 years. So stability, as Dean alluded to, not so much here on the East Coast, but uh, we're, we're growing. Yeah, Midwest is, is a home, Minnesota. Uh, fifth largest U.S. mortgage lender, Fifth largest U.S. commercial bank, more than 465 billion in assets today, almost 19 million customers. Um, they've done a great job with with community service, giving over 
58 million dollars to the community, back to the community. Uh, we're in the same business, right? We need to have your homes closed. We need to have our loans closed, right? So it's a partnership. And start to finish, we have an experienced group. Uh, we have a, a, an operations center, very rare. It's in Woodbridge, New Jersey. So local, we have processing, underwriting, closing, right here local. So that's a rare, very rare in our industry because most of the, the cheaper employment for our industry is, is out in the Midwest. And that's a huge advantage that we have here at US Bank locality. We recognize the importance of the timeline. So myself and my operations partners, we're managing based on commitment date, based on closing date. That's important to you, extremely important to us. We recognize that, we're sensitive to it, we put all our efforts that way. Now I get to brag a little bit about Patrick. Patrick, been in the business, what, 17? 17 years? What, one of the best things I like about Patrick is his ability to pre-approve a, a client. He's into the details, he's into the questions, just as, as Dean said, we have the capability to pre-approve a client from within 24 hours. It's important for you to, to have us run credit for your client. Why is that so important? Right. Does everybody? Does do you get the uh, the statement that when you ask how is your credit excellent, very good, outstanding? You can imagine we get it too, right? Right now, there's 28 different FICO credit scoring systems out there. We use one. So if you're seeing uh, what's the uh, the popular one on your phone, the uh, credit, oh, credit karma, karma yeah. credit, credit karma, karma, right? Karma. Those scores are inflated. The people that are coming back to me saying, my credit score is 865. <laughs> We're running their credit and their credit score is 685. So it's a 200, 200 swing there. So I encourage you, contact Patrick. Let, th let him run their credit up front. He asks all the right questions. It's all about managing expectations. So thank you for having us. Hopefully we'll talk to you more about lunch, uh, more to you at lunch. Uh, we're hosting that soon. Thanks. Thank you, Drew. Good morning, everyone. Um, hey, Patrick. My name is Patrick Saavedra, uh, First World War II, my buddy Lou. Uh, Thank you, brother. We know each other for a long time. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we, were, we worked together in the same company until the market crashed. Yeah, it's because yeah. of us that the market crashed. <laughs> 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 Probably. We had a hand yeah. in it. It's a nice <laughs> All right, so uh, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. We say back. Thank you again. I really appreciate the opportunity oh, thank you. To, to have us uh, having us here. Been in the industry for a long time. Uh, uh, forget about the, the BA, MBA, whatever. Uh, I've been around. I have experience. Uh, after the market crash, I went into loss mitigation, and I, last year I, I got tired that I decided to go back to my roots, which is lending. So that's why I'm here. And then I choose the best bank, U.S. bank, to be work with. Why? Because uh, I noticed that for the few people that, is, that remain in the business, they were switching companies, you know, mortgage companies from one to each other every three, four months. You know, people that were trying to hire me for years. Uh, I noticed like uh, they went to the mortgage company, to the mortgage company twice or three times a year. And I was like wondering why. So when I decided to go back, say, you know what, I'm going to go back to the entity that's going to give me the support and also the name to back me up. That's why I'm here. And U.S. Bank is here. Uh, let's talk about U.S. Bank briefly. Um, besides of what Drew would say, uh, we could extend the rate lock. That's important. Uh, so for any reason we are not able to close, we could go up to ex extended period without charging the client anything. Uh, portfolio. We are U.S. Bank do not sell the loan to any entity, so th that is also powerful because we service in the loan for the remaining of the life of the life of the loan. Financing for all the houses, absolutely, we have everything in there. So you mentioned we have it. Technology, technology is huge now. We have uh, a loan forum plus the bank application that 
if you decide to work with us, you're going to have access and the client is going to have access and it's immediately response. The client is going to have emails and texts of every single step. If the client up upload a document into the system, into the portal, automatically the system send a confirmation email to me, to the client, and to you. So you, you know exactly, you don't have to call me to know what's going on because everything is in there. When the loan moves from opening to processing to underwriting, when the loan is approved, when everything is ready to close, you on the whole process you have daily and pretty much immediately tracking in there. Uh, portal, you're gonna have access to the whole system from day one on, on since the opening until the day that we close. So let's talk about why US Bank, and this is important to mention. Uh, back in the day, uh, when, when Lou and I we were in the business, and in those days, the loan officers, we were making money on the rate. So with the rate comes uh, profit for the loan officer, and then you make the money to them. In the bank, we don't make money like that. In the bank, we make money in the loan amount. So, and the bank has the ability to offer the cheapest rate because we don't make any money on the rate. We make money. It's the same thing for us to make the loan for 300,000 and the lowest rate and the 300,000 and the higher rate. So we have the best interest to give you the best rate ever. That's number one. So that's the big difference compared with anybody out there. So why is it important for you? Because that's gonna give you the ability to, to look like a hero with your client. Why? Because you're gonna get the lowest rate compared with anybody out there. And then, depending on the scenario, on top of that, we could offer you lender credit that we're closing for us because of the, on top of the lowest rate, probably, depending on the scenario, a lender credit that's gonna be used to the, it's gonna help the client to the, to the, the tower to the closing costs. Lender fees, we are one of the lowest in the market. And also, uh, we offer up to $1,000 for the client for opening an online savings or checking accounts. So, of course, there's no U.S. banks branches around here, but the client could open with a $25 a checking or saving accounts online, and the client is, uh, is gonna have up to $1,000 credit towards closing costs. So just to reiterate that, that's, that's a client, a borrower, opening up a checking account for t with 20, a $25 deposit, getting a credit for $1,000. It's big. It's big. We waive escrow in New York, New Jersey. We have, again, three-day extensions. And humbly, uh, the most important part, I'm here to serve you. My phone always is gonna be answered. You can reach me literally 24 seven. And, and that's, I don't know, back in the day, it was all, also a problem. So when I decided to come back, I said, you know what? You could test me and try me, because I always would pick up the phone. Uh, the worst case scenario, two, three hours, two, three business hours. Any questions before we go to the other one? Nope. nope. Total expert, uh, as uh, Dean and Drew mentioned, this is, this, is, uh, this is huge, this is amazing. When I finished my training in Minneapolis, I was like, so exciting because uh, Total Expert is a software that the bank, that, that the bank decides to use them. The bank is paying for all the marketing and you will have from day one an invitation from me to join. You don't need me to have access to all the marketing materials. You're able to print. You are able to, on your own, to use, once you complete your profile, you, you will be able to even do your own, your own link to, a, to, the, to the movie can be posted from, your, from the, your property into your own Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and also a LinkedIn account. If you have a problem, and it's the weekend, you, you're gonna have a, 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 a concert level that you could call directly to total mar a total expert and they will answer any question for you. Again, as Dean said, and Drew said, that's completely free just for working through US Bank. Any questions? Thank you, thank you again for your time. I really appreciate again the opportunity. I hope we could do a lot of business together. And I'm here. I'm here to serve you. Thank you, Beth. Thanks, Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you. Sure.
Oh yeah, I mentioned okay. Yeah. Quick this part as well. Or here, uh that's all right. Okay, uh in the last folder you're gonna have beside of my of my uh business cards that everything is linked to my phone. I cover pretty much the whole nor northeast, uh, all the counties from Bergen all the way to to Cumberland. And also we are mentioning a couple of products that nobody has. The first one is called the FHA First Step. FHA First Step is basically an, an FHA uh, that has the ability to give 1% lower the rate so the, for, for the first year. So let's say the, the client qualified at four and four. So the client will be paid 325 for the first year, for the first 12 months, completely free. No extra, no extra cost for the client. That's also huge for you guys, because you know what? That's gonna give you the ability to go back to the client and listen, you know, the cheapest rate, plus the help for the closing cost, plus that, and, and then on top of that, you're gonna pay 1% less for the entire year. So everything is in there. Uh, go around and let me know if you have any questions. Oh, we have a we have a raffle. We have a raffle. We have a raffle. Nice. Uh, uh, the price is a fifty dollar gift card for a local restaurant. Nice. So you want to participate? Please just give us your business card. We just need your business card. We'll pull it right after lunch. Yes, sir. Just repeat the question. Can you repeat the question? Yeah. How much of a closing cost help the client can have? It all depends. Number one is going to be with the opening, uh, the opening of savings and a checking account. The client open online a twenty-five dollar checking or saving account, then automatically he will get up to a thousand dollars towards the closing cost. That's number one. Number two, in the rate, depending on their scenario, he could get lender points towards closing cost. How much? It all depends on the client. Every, every, any kind, every client is unique. Yes, ma'am. checking account we also have options with our own portfolio pricing that allows for for lender credit as well so it's all dependent on the mortgage amount specifically that's why we can't quote you a specific amount that's capable to be credited at closing but yeah there as a direct lender as a large bank we have our own portfolio meaning we lend our own funds so unlike some other institutions we have that capability Normally, the, any mortgage company will sell the loan or try to place it with Fannie and Freddie. In our case, it's completely different. We already have a line of credit, probably because of the, um, the volume of loans with, with you know, Freddie, Freddie, Freddie and, and Fannie, and we don't need any extra pool. So we could overcome that obstacle. Any more questions? Okay. Thank, uh, you so thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No worries, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, guys, so listen up. We're just going to go over our announcements, and then we'll head out of here, get a bite to eat, relax a little bit. So first announcement I want to make before uh, I forget, guys, uh, a lot of you are struggling with dot loop, so I am going to get together with uh, Derek today, and we're going to uh, set up a dot loop training. Uh, I would say a few trainings. So if you guys can't make it to one, you can make it to another. Because uh, we did do a video on it, but it seems that you guys still need like that first go around in person with someone. So I'm gonna have Derek conduct dot loop trainings pretty much the majority of the next two weeks. So if you guys can make it. Well, not if you can make it, you should prioritize to make it if you guys uh, are doing business. And if you guys watch are watching this or if you guys uh, are here today and you don't take advantage of it, 
I'm sorry. It's just it's really difficult to help you guys over the phone. It, it's not really that type of system where I can just guide you that way. It's better to be in person. So you guys take opportunity to come in and do that if you're struggling with the dot loop. I know Jen, you've been using it already, right? You found it to be okay. Yeah, you getting over it. Pretty simple, right? Yeah, it gets really easy, guys. It's it's the number one system that they use at the bigger brokerages, and it's not. It didn't get to be number one because it's more difficult than anything else. But we have to. We just got to learn how to navigate it, okay? And uh, same goes with me. I'm gonna learn more about it so I can show you guys when I see you one on one as well. Okay. Next thing I want to talk to you guys about is the dialogue training. Tom, Wednesday. Wednesday, we're gonna spend a lot of time on telephone prospecting using some different variations. Of the dialogue. Okay. And in addition to that, we're going to spend some time talking about open houses and how to talk to people and how to use these tent cards. Yes. So it'll be a good class. Just uh, show up. <coughs> we had 11 people here last week. We're growing all the time, and I hope it continues. Great. I hope so too. You. I hope so too. Uh, next thing, guys, the charity basketball tournament is June 1st. So whether you're an athlete or not, you guys just want to come and support. Uh, you can go to our website, culture.state backslash basketball. You guys can register there. If you guys are interested in playing, please sign up quickly so we can get the teams and we can get the uh, team situated. We can get the jersey situated. We get them ordered. I'd love to see a lot of participation here from the office, guys, because it is for a good event. Uh, I'm good, good cause. Uh, Derek, you have a question? Uh, what's your plan to get deadline? Deadline? Well, last year I had people signing up at, at the game, which is not good for us because we can't predict how many jerseys we'll need. But, uh, Joelle, you were saying? By so she said by Memorial Day, if you guys can get us a yes or no or final answer. If you guys know other people who'd be interested in playing, it's not just restricted to culture, estate agents, or anyone in the real estate business. It could be anyone. We're trying to make it massive this year so we can have, uh, we could raise our target to $5,000 this year. So last year we were able to raise $3,500. This year our goal is 5000 so we can make that possible. I know we can, guys, if you guys put the word out there. We've been doing our best. We've been putting it on everywhere we can. We've been um, boosting it, marketing it. We're email blasting. So, guys, if you can, please share that information with anyone you think would uh, would enjoy it. Okay. Yes? Okay. Even if you're not playing, like, I'm not playing. I'm actually going to be, um, like I did last year. Working? Okay. Yeah, well, I'm going to be working at it. I'm still going to donate because... Um, the, the for good cause. Exactly. For good cause. There's kids that need it more than we do. Because, I mean, we're smart, we're adults, but they're still kids. They go through things every day. I'm not yeah. saying we don't, but they need kids. <laughs> like they're not yeah, kids. so if you guys are not familiar with it, if anybody's watching this for the first time, the, the tournament's going to sponsor the BBA, Bridge Basketball Association League. So what they've done is they've, gotten, they've, uh, put, they've put this organization together where they create a basketball tournament. It's really cool. It's really well put together. And it gets kids off the street, kids that normally wouldn't be playing sports in high school. Uh, they get them off the streets. They go in there, and they start playing ball. A lot of them end up going to college after that. But it gives them healthy things to do instead of being on the corner getting in trouble so uh, definitely a good cause and I would love for you guys to all participate if you can uh, uh, next thing I want to talk to you guys is about the, the me first pledge if you haven't gone uh, forward and signed your me first pledge please do so I sent it to everyone last week and uh, just this week and I, I was listening to a podcast where there was a, um, a well-known uh, person who did a study on this and what he came to find out is that <clears throat> we have peak hours we have trough hours and then we have recovery hours. Our peak hours are between 9 to 12 in the morning, right? 9 to 12 p.m. So that's our peak hours. So if we don't give ourselves the best part of the day, we're giving ourselves a disservice. Then after 12, we have lunch. Then that, that we turn into what's called the trough, which is like the, the valley, the lowest part of our day where our, our energy is at the lowest and we're not going to really be very productive. We should do more analytical work. I mean, sorry, we should do more, um, how would it, uh, administrative work at that point. We shouldn't be doing money making generating things, right? We shouldn't be doing that. So it comes not only from me, but it's scientific proof that in the morning is when you should do all the stuff that makes you money. The mid the mid afternoon you guys should do all your paperwork. And then the recovery time is after five PM is when everyone starts to recover from that trough. That's when you can do some more creative work is what he said you should do around that time. So he said peak performance in the morning trough in the middle which is going to be your administrative and then after 5 p.m. is you should do your anything that's creative so if you guys have ideas marketing those types of things 
or if you want to do another another round of phone calls that's great too but it's not just me who says it there's actually real proof out there and I was really glad that I heard this podcast when I, uh, I learned this fact and it really makes a lot of sense now that we uh, I apply it to what we do every day uh, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about and you guys may see me wearing it today which is the uh, hard money project the HMP shirt that I'm wearing we unveiled it this weekend for the very first time so I'd like to pass these around if you can guys just to the back so what the hard money project is it uh, we created Ed and I created this company we put this together about a year ago we've been working on it for a very long time almost a year ago and what it is is it's a place where your clients your, your clients who have never done a deal before or even if they're experienced uh, investors they can go to this website and they can fill out a short application and then lenders will bid on them they'll bid on their project so instead of us going to one hard money lender and accepting whatever they are offering us which is 13 and 3 10 and 4 whatever it is they're offering we get to see these lenders not compete for our business which gives you guys the best rate possible gives you guys the best terms possible and also it allows the uh, consumer to be more educated and there's a more of a level of transparency for them because going in the scariest thing for a lot of people when they hear hard money is that, oh my god like they're gonna you know they're gonna take advantage of me or they're gonna give me terms I don't understand all of the information is gonna be put into a perspective where they can wrap their head around it they know their actual cost of lending as opposed to oh you know it's only gonna be two thousand dollars a month yeah but two thousand dollars a month plus upfront fees exit fees uh, payoff fees like all these fees that they add in there without you knowing all have to be disclosed so now you'll actually see the actual cost of the money which is awesome so if you guys need uh, help with transactional funding if a deal needs to close today and it has to reclose tomorrow we, we have transactional lenders in there as well and we're also going to be adding in their business lines of credit so for instance if you have a client who has a business and they want to get into investing they can use their business uh, as the collateral and they can go in and get a loan against their business so that loan of fifty thousand dollars could now be their down payment for the hard money uh, for the purchase and then the hard money covers the rest so it's a good way for you guys to go in there and start create more business for yourselves if you have people usually people who are anxious to buy usually don't have the money and people who have the money to buy sometimes aren't the most anxious so now you guys have tools that will allow you to get more people into the game if you guys uh, get creative enough and use these tools Tom you had your hand up no, I was just waving. oh you're waving, waving okay cool yeah so if you guys have any clients who are looking to do a hard money loan looking to do anything like that please let them know about the site the hard money project.com it's really cool it's uh, really easy to use and we're also gonna be having a lot of good educational stuff on there for the investors so they can get better acquainted with doing a uh, deal Jen you have your hand up oh I'm sorry okay all right uh, that's about it guys so I know we went a little bit over I want to close out with our with our prayer and get you guys out of here sorry about that that's a uh, me first pledge for anyone who hasn't seen it if you guys did not get the email for whatever reason please let me know I will send it to you guys again okay uh, what else what else what else what else okay all right that's it I think we're good we're just gonna go ahead and close out with our prayer okay father we ask you like we always do to please continue looking over us and we thank you once again for having us in good health and having us all together here as an extended family we ask you to take these teachings that we that we received today and help us implement it into our daily lives we, help, we ask you to help us with our mindset, to help us with negative thoughts and negative things that happen to us on an everyday basis. Never allow us to let other people get into our head or get the best of us and dictate our future. Allow us to always be able to manage our outcome and always have you by our side. That way we can always know that we are protected. We thank you for everything we have in our life and we ask for forgiveness if we have been the cause of anyone else's pain or we've done anything wrong against our, our, our brethren and our sisters. Thank you so much for everything we have in our life and please continue to bless us during this week and watch over us as we strive to be better people and better at our business. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys.